you know we're acting like <laughs> again everything is like a life and death and even the uh, the well, performance it is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah it is funny if you if you really want to nitpick and even think about like uh comic keys performance and like you know setsu being like pulled in and then just having like this over dramatic like oh my god like he's a light in the darkness and all these things i'm just like <laughs> All right, cool, Kingdom Hearts. Like, let's 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 slow our roll here and let's uh let's keep going. Just but, uh, to, you no. just don't get it. I know, right? I just don't have the high class. Yeah, you just I, don't understand. Again, I'm, I'm not a shamisen fine. master. Or maybe I need to I need to go to Japan, spend you know a few months with a with a renowned shamisen player, and then maybe I'll get it. Maybe I'll have a <laughs> fraction of an understanding. But. everyone welcome to the anime izakaya podcast week two of the spring 2021 season on this show we'll be discussing the current season of anime airing every week i'm your host david and joining me today we have shren hello except we have ku yo yo except we have taylor hello okay there we go there we go <laughs> uh, we'll hey. justin hey guys all right uh no anime news this week so we're gonna jump right into our discussions let's start with our first show Let's talk about Shaman King, and you guys get to carry because I didn't catch up to this week's. Uh, oof, oof. Okay. I mean, I think it was about the same kind of uh, Shonen deal, um, but we introduced into like another character. I would, ass- I'm assuming, is going to be a main character. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but she seems, she seems more she... like she'd be like another kind of like anti. Dude, okay, so both the shamans that we've run into so far have been just assholes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just assuming they'll change. Well, <laughs> Did you happen to notice any connection between those uh those two shamans, Seretan? Um Oh god. Uh, didn't they mention it? Yes. Did they mention um, Yeah. Uh, uh wait, wait, do you mean like the beside like the dude from the previous episode? Mm-hmm. Uh weren't they in the set like related? Yes, sir. Go They're on. brother, go brother on. and sister. Okay, go on. <laughs> it, it, like, is it Shaman King? Like, I feel like I watched it forever ago. Um, but no, no I, I mean, I still thought it was like sod. It was another different way, I guess, like uh, approaching like the whole like what's considered like a shaman. I mean, they she basically would just took uh, a corpse and started throwing those uh, those uh, <laughs> talismans on it. Yeah, and Chinese just, zombies. Yeah, just control them. Good old, good old Taoism. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we have more members of the Tao family, uh, who basically, if you've watched Hunter Hunter, they're basically like the Zoldic family, or just you know this family of shamans that have kind of these more, I guess, uh, underhanded type means of you know how they try to get shaman becoming shaman king. Yeah, it's like that it sounds like that's like the way that they know how to get them, though, you know. Yeah. So more <laughs> so, I guess, if you wanted to classify evil, but again, uh, I think you know you can look at it both ways. I sure. mean, it kind of seemed like a pretty evil way. I mean, they killed the guy and basically just just so they can control him. <laughs> Not just any guy. They killed Bruce Lee. Yeah, I thing. know. <laughs> but, yeah, oh, when, man. when they had the name that came up, I was like, I was like, damn, I was like, what the hell is his real name? I was like, I know, it's, I know, it's, I know it's something Lee, and I actually had to like go and look it up. I was like, oh my, of course. And I, but it's just like it's the way of the how they had it done. I like how they're just gonna kind of move along with the story, very uh, shonen and like not like hand this guy over to the or this girl over to the cops or anything. They're basically just gonna be like, we'll meet again one day. And it's just like, okay, well, you you kill the guy. Good old. <laughs> you've been uh... like, <laughs> you know, power of shonen and yo just being the the ultimate bro. At yeah, the end it, of the day. he just wants to you know be friends with everybody because yeah. no one is evil. Yeah, it's all yeah. circumstantial. Apparently. His future wife. His future wife seems pretty cool too. Oh yeah, Anna's Anna's the best. She's a boss. Yeah, she also seems like hella strong too. Uh, uh, also, she's more of a support uh, character, but yeah, she's pretty strong. Support, sir. Remember, yeah. support matters. How could you not talk about Tal Juno? She was like the first fully modeled like full-size character uh that they introduced and then when i was a kid True. like it was a it was a fierce battle between anna <laughs> and, and and june because man she i don't know maybe it was the green hair maybe it's because she was actually like you know she had nice tall slender oh. body with the curves but we, man we, we comment on the the motherly figure a lot in anime yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, yes 
<laughs> but they, they if she doesn't stand people. up to you, it's like, man, she just looks so good. See, Maybe it's because everyone else was shorter, but see, I do. Well, <laughs> I, I kind of like. I wish I would have like watched this during like when I was a uh, when I was a kid because I'm sure I would have the same the same feelings. Mm-hmm. Um. But no, it's yeah. uh, you know, it, it was another like interesting way of how they use like shaman. Because I just assume everybody was just going to be like the same thing as the MC going into this, mm-hmm. and then um, because the other guy sounds like he kind of has like the same. He does the same way as a, uh, or um, from the previous episode, he does the same way as the MC. Just you know, doesn't really give him a choice and just kind of like uh, just um, beats them, I guess. And, uh, instead of like, or just like, uh, or forces them to join instead of like, you know, befriending them. No, more this, of like a sub, a submissive yes. relationship than a a parasocial. Right, right. And then you get basically, like I said, they get this other one that's completely thrown at you, where they're just taking like a, a corpse and then just controlling it. And yeah, then, if I remember, it, uh, if I remember correctly, the show actually does go quite into details with the different ways you can acquire the spirits and like what type of different shamans there. Are, so. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I thought that was actually pretty cool. Yeah. You'll yeah. learn about different like classifications and stuff. So it will kind of uh, branch out, as Koo mentioned, right. uh, yep. as we progress further here. I think uh, the thing for me that I enjoyed it, and admittedly, I think with rose-tinted glasses, you know, watching now the the reboot of sorts here, um, definitely, you know, kind of still drives of being a shonen at the end of the day. So I do kind of admittedly, you know, turn my brain off a little bit because I don't expect like too many things happening, especially since right. you know, I already know this portion of the story. Um, but the one thing that I am glad to see is that it does look like they are progressing the story uh, quicker than they yep. did with the original series. Because mm-hmm. um, I think in the original, they did have some, not filler, but there was more stuff in between that I think, you know, back in the day was fine. And I'm sure, you know, potentially they may have had to do it just for pacing things. But I'm glad to see that with this reboot that we're moving forward to the new stuff, because I think that's what the majority of people really want to see is they want to see all of the arcs and events that weren't able to be, you know, covered. Cause otherwise, like we said last week, I think it would be a little bit of a, I don't want to call it a drag, but it almost is a drag of just like waiting for like week after week when we, you know, we have 50 something episodes to get to something like new right. for the first time to see it be animated in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, it's uh, I mean, I've never watched it before. I am enjoying it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> um, there was a god, there was another comment I was gonna. Oh, um, so it's uh, so for basically, I don't remember his like his future wife's name, uh, Anna. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. For, so for Anna's ability, is there? I mean, I don't know if there's like anything where I know she's able to just really just summon whomever and then and then just uh, uh, okay, is MC's name Show? Yo, yo. Okay. Y O H. I kept thinking show. I was like, for some reason, this sounds wrong. No, but okay. So for when um, I also like I don't completely hate the comedy. The comedy is definitely like the '90s comedy for anime, <laughs> where it's like that really kind of like quirk. Especially they have the, that little dude where for like the kind of like comedy relief. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it's basically when you when you know like oh it's like summon like this like summon his future or his master, and then you learn that basically you summon them at the time of their death. Yeah. Uh, and then you just basically just get this old, this just completely old dude that's just you know make it just do it like uh has has the moves. You get the sea show man. You yeah. Had to lay down the law and put uh put Bruce yeah. Lee back in his uh his right mind so to speak because man yeah. was tripping in full of rage. Yeah, I definitely didn't think he was gonna join her after uh, coming to his senses. Right. It is one of those you know shonen things of like yeah. when you step back and you look at it and you're just like. Yo, you were made to be a slave and basically yeah. killed by this family just for, yeah. you know, your your natural talents to fight in this shaman war. And then to your point, he's just like, oh, OK, I talked to my master. Like, we're all cool now. Like, I'm sorry. Let's be friends and do this over again. Yeah. Mm. To, to be fair, she is pretty hot. I, I mean, yeah, so maybe maybe there was some reason. Just like, I probably oh. wouldn't have went down the same route. <laughs> yeah, if I got if I got to be somebody's master, I'll be OK. I'll, uh, you know, I'll take it this all time. Right. Well, that's a good thing. But, uh, no, I'm yeah. taking chats. Yeah. Yep. And I'm good. Cool. Well, I'm I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying it so far, especially as like a, a newer would. watcher, so to speak. Yeah. So Yeah. You're talking to the guy that's watching the reboot of Digibot. I think I can manage <laughs> uh, with an actual reboot of Shaman King. Yeah. Nice. I'll I'll look up eventually. <laughs> I'll be there soon. Cool. All right, Sounds so. good. I think we're at it there for Shaman King. Let's move on to our next show. 
Let's talk about Megalobox, or I guess Nomad, Megalobox 2. And Megalobox is... Like, it's honestly, like, I think we talked a little bit before the podcast. Like, it's my surprise show of the season. Like, I was not expect Like, how the first season ended, and it just kind of, like, you know, whimpered out. I wasn't really... didn't One, I didn't really know what to expect. But then, just, uh, like, how the first three episodes have started, I've actually been really surprised and actually kind of excited just to see uh, um, Joe's story. I think, like... Uh... Especially this latest episode feels like, uh, I guess we're seeing more of the backstory of what happened in between the gaps, and I think it's starting really starting to pick up. I mean, I was still always interested, but yeah, I think this is where it really starting to pick up. And hopefully, after this this tournament with Chief, we got we start to see more of a uh, more, I guess, of Joe's backstory. I guess that's really the, the one thing I'm really interested in, besides the lore. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think you hit the nail on the head. Like that one scene where, again, you know, Joe's remembering the the time in the hospital, and specifically when they have the the like sheet pulled over the coach, and you know, Sakio is kind of you know full of tears looking at Joe, and he's just like, you know, why weren't you here? Like, where were you? Like, this was your fault. And he just, you know, that obviously really drilled into Joe and why he's kind of in the abusive state of abusing these painkillers that he was in. So I think I, I definitely agree. Like, that's the one thing where I'm just like, damn, like. From what we knew about Joe and Coach before, like it was always, you know, the coach that was, you know, doing the underhanded stuff and kept on telling Joe that, hey, I'm not fixing fight anymore. Like we're on the same page here. And then he would constantly like renege on on that kind of promise. And now it's like the tables have turned again of like, all right, Joe, like what the hell did you do, man? Like <laughs> even even Chief's like relatable story as well. Like his was his his sucks too. Yeah. Yeah. I just have this feeling that like I feel like it's not really Joe's fault. It's probably he probably just blames himself for yeah. like an unfortunate I, I, circumstance. I just feel like that's where it's going. But true. Yeah. Like I, I like do you guys think like uh, the you know kind of like the voices like or what we're saying like in the past shots like do you think we actually do you think Sachio actually blamed him for uh for the death or do you think uh or do you think it was just like I something that no I don't I think he's just like, he's, I think he's just airing his grievances and like I think he's just a kid so he doesn't really know. Yeah, process it's hard to know. Like, like you said, is it is it that we're seeing this experience through the eyes of Joe, and you know he's just making it seem a lot worse than potentially what I it mean, was, you know, because it, it's all his perspective at the end of the day. But I also right. couldn't, you know, I wouldn't say that it's not something like that couldn't have happened. I could see that for a kid as young as Satio, you know, who's grown in a lesser than great environment that this world is kind of set in with this, you know impoverished kind of classism um that definitely could be you know a a valid reaction of just you know this was your world like this was your family and you know for somebody that you had so much admirement for and then these events occur like yeah it's very easy to kind of uh go off the rail so to speak especially at a young age yeah Yeah. well i mean this episode uh there was a lot of the the callbacks to how like i mean a lot of comparisons between joe and chief and how uh, Joe was saying how he uh, he felt like he had to punish himself, which the Chief was also feeling, and then and then that we that's when we got the flashback where we kept seeing like with kept seeing the coach appear, and he kept saying like, "Oh, do you really just want to punish yourself or something?" So I just I sort of see it as like I think I think yeah, Joe is just like he's just exaggerating. I think he just maybe wants to put the blame on himself. That's that's what I pick up from. A lot of like, oh, his conversation that's a good with the point. coach. Mm-hmm. That's a good point, yeah, because you, you definitely know that the coach wouldn't be saying the shit that he's been saying in his, uh, like, a, or basically, like, you know, when he's going back and forth or, like, or, like handing him over the pills and stuff. Like, yeah. you, you, mm-hmm. you just know that he wouldn't do it. Definitely. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely excited, you know, to continue to learn more about Joe. I'm glad we're not, you know, making Joe's struggle of getting off the pills last for too long. It's yeah. like obviously, you know, this I, episode was really kind yeah. of the quitting cold turkey. Yeah, um, I thought it was gonna last with him, whole you know, seasons. cleaning up and shaving. So, like, I'm glad, like, I'm glad, like, it's like we're moving past that point, yeah. like, we're moving on. Yeah. 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 So. Um, I think for me, though, the thing that I'm potentially kind of not worried about, but I think is potentially like an obvious direction is that I think something's gonna happen to Chief. Yeah. Where, you know, you have that one guy with the who's part of like the mafia or whatever with like the little dog that is really upset to see Chief win yeah, in these fights that. towards entering the, the Megalo tourney. So yeah. I definitely feel like in either the, the next fight that we see next episode, like something shady's 
going to go down. And then that's going to be like Whoa. the drawing factor for, wow. for Joe to get back into the ring. Yeah. And especially with the, the name of this season and the use of the hummingbird. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw again that Chief was carving uh, a wooden hummingbird when yeah. he was, you know, sitting in front of his, uh, his previous wife and, and son's grave. So. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. making things obvious there, I feel. <laughs> well, he's not going to he's not going to come out of the fire unscathed either. I mean, all he had was a water bottle on him and then uh <laughs> you you know it I, I kind of just want to see like either like what happens. Ho I, I actually I hope that like he doesn't die, but I feel like this could be no, a bad, possibly a bad chance of like, uh Joe jumping in. When Justin mentioned it, I'm pretty sure like, that's exactly. I think I just like Justin, I think this is zero profit more right here. I think like, that's exactly what's going to happen where like where the chief gets injured and he can't continue his fight, and then Joe has to like step in and he calls for like another tournament order or like a sudden death or, or something. So, well I, I, well, I feel like well that older guy, he was the one that that was wanting Joe to fight from the beginning. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. So, so, yeah. So this is the perfect time because so you know, hopefully, you know, the, the the happy scenario is like you guys said that chief just gets you know injured where he can't fight, so Joe yeah. steps in, or I could just very see it like them wanting to draw that uh, dramatism of. You know, Chief dying and now Joe having this additional weight on his oh, shoulders. God. And now that, knowing his backstory no. of like, that, you know, no. what happened to the Chief's wife and son. Maybe I'm just a masochist. Maybe I just want to see like some massive <laughs> no, no, no. suffering back, apart back, from back to the Joe's already suffering. <laughs> Justin is ready to go back to the painkillers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, send me back, man. Lock me up. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I'm like. I'm not hoping happens. dark cause... for my own good. Because <laughs> <laughs> that could bring the show down for me if uh, they actually do. If, if somehow, like we, you know, we spent this much time of him going over the pills, and then they they end up taking him out, and then we have to go basically go through the whole thing again. Oh yeah. my god, no thanks. I would not want to go through that again. I just. Dude, I also. Oh yeah. Go ahead. I'll just say. I mean, like I know it's an important part of the story, but again, I want to focus on like the lore and more about this dystopian world. So. Yep. I just don't know how like how it's gonna end with like the nomad part. Like, are they like are they just gonna have him go back to the ring, or is he just gonna be keeping like a coach for chief? I don't know. Yeah. Like, I unless like, they, well, unless like, they somehow like get like another season. This is supposed to be like is this nomad part was supposed to be like a setup for the Mango Box tournament again. And he comes back. Yeah. Now that's what I'm worried about. Is like, so say something does happen to Chief. Joe has to step in. This fight that they're fighting in right now is the the grand prize is just to get into the new Megalo tourney. And yeah. so I very well could see. All right, you prize? know we're we're repeating money. the story again. Like, oh, I'll have, uh, to, I'll have to go back. I was pretty I sure. Remember. I thought it was just the money. I didn't know it was related to the Megalo box tournament. Uh, I check that too. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. So. Again, that's where I could definitely see it going. Then, like, Joe steps in for Chief. He's now involved in the, the Megalo tourney scene. And then now Actually, we're getting, you know... That would make sense, because then, like... Joe going be, through again. It'd be, like, the run back if he has to face against Edison again and, like, go through, like, his his anxiety of, like, of like failing again. Yep. And then that could be the, the final end is now Joe's getting this money for um, the, the immigrant uh, kind yeah. of community. So, yeah. Cause especially yeah, with 13 episodes, so that could definitely be a, a fitting thing. Because I don't, I couldn't see where they could go, further than Joe's involvement in the tournament taking place of Chief, us learning more about you know what actually happened to Coach, and then maybe some type of reunion with Sachio and the others at some point, and then that would tie it up pretty much. I feel like with that many episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you try Dang. to go into much more, then I, I think then you kind of get into trouble. No, no, no. <laughs> I think you hit the profit right here. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see what happens. I I want to give you that profit card. All right. I also really hate that fucking kid. That uh, oh, yeah. like, oh, he's been like a I mean, yeah, yeah, he's, he's a little shit. But I mean, to be I fair, I mean, this episode we at least saw he finally, when it got to like real heavy violence, he hesitated and didn't, you know, join in on the throwing of the Molotov cocktails. But I mean, all it took I, was one, and then they just scattered. I, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> so, I know. But even mean, still, like it's not, you know, outside the realms of reality. Of like, imagine, you know, put yourself yeah, in those shoes. It's like, of, like it's like if you're a kid in that situation, you're trying to fit in. It's like I mean, this is how like how gang culture is. So it's not that yeah. surprising. Yeah. So I don't blame him for that. It's just yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So yeah. Dude, yeah. I mean, it's like it's it's a solid start. I'm really hoping it actually holds and doesn't fizzle like the first season. I just, I'm really every week I'll give a shout out to the animation because I love this style and like I will. It is. I'm it glad is we nice. get it because yeah. we barely get it. So always appreciate this style. 
Yeah. So I think, if, I think if anything, what really will make this better than season one and not fizzle out, like you said, Sren, is like now we have more stakes and involvements with these characters where in season right. one, you know, we were still learning about Joe, what he was, you know, his kind of purpose and thing to do here. And well, now that's like stuff that we can all kind of lean one. on. I feel right. like season one is more about the sport. And now it's like, it's actually about it's like character more, development yeah. and more true. lore. Very so true. I, I think that's all I appreciate about this. It's not just focusing on the sport. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh... it was yeah, it was with the sport and character development, but it was like kind of, but it was definitely heavily more off with the sport than actually character development. Agreed. Uh, so. But I, but also, Sasha would love this ending song with the, the Spanish <laughs> guitar. It sounds so nice. Yeah. yeah. So no, Johan definitely, translate. definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's the one thing I wish they had more translations for the different Spanish speaking. I could pick yeah. up words, but yeah. it's definitely well, not getting the full that's picture. Just, that's just Funimation doesn't translate. I'm pretty sure uh, other fan styles probably has it translated. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. that's true. Yeah. I haven't looked at other ones, so that's okay. We we'll have, have our own to, fan, Johan. Have to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have our in-house uh, translator uh, for us. I should ask him because um, he said the title, the first episode was on. Was it like whispering? Uh, was it ghost whispering the ghosts of the requiem? something like mm-hmm. that was like the first half I translating it for the other titles we'll get on that okay. yeah sounds good a, anyway. res- a resident spanish translator agreed <laughs> yes that is all, all right. for me yeah yep, so that's gonna wrap it up for nomad mega box 2 let's move on to our next show we got nagatoro san and then yep. i'm gonna have to start this because you just uh finished watching the first two episodes so i want to hear your thoughts on uh the show so far yeah so if you're familiar with our podcast um and you might know that i actually like a show called um usaki chan wants to hang out i was kind of getting the same vibes with this show as well uh but instead of someone that wants to hang out with you it's someone that wants to bully you and toy with you at all times and she kind of has this like sinister or sadistic uh personality and face as she does it uh, so at first, I really didn't like the character at all, but I guess after episode two, it kind of develops the character a little bit more, and it looks like it's just one of those classic cases where she seems to really like the guy, but then, you know, she likes to bully him or tease him. So, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's not for everyone. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that, but uh, I feel like this anime has potential to uh, be something that's more complex than what we are given in the first two episodes. So, I think that was a really good way of describing it. I totally agree with you. I'm kind of curious to see if it is going to be a little bit more of just like um, like that, like how you mentioned that it's a classic case of like she likes him so she's like teasing him or if it's really going to kind of go into more into other things like relationships that have like masochism and things like that or Mm -hmm. i'm just curious to see how far they go with this relationship because it's already gone further than i thought it was going to by episode two so i'm i I don't really Mm -hmm. know but um like i remember people were kind of saying that it was like gonna be the meme anime of the season Uh but people yeah (laughs) um and i i mean i could i could definitely see that that might still be the case but i do think that there will be more to it than that you know Mm-hmm. And I do think the characters are like I didn't find them unlikable. Um, it's more just that, like, especially after the first episode, I just wouldn't want to be either one of them <laughs> personally. <laughs> like, I just didn't want to uh, like envision myself in either one of their places. But I didn't personally have anything against either of them. Mm-hmm. I'll say like the main guy definitely got better by the second episode because it just felt like. The first episode, he was really like, I don't know, like I didn't feel bad for him the first episode, basically. Whereas like second one, it felt more more actual teasing into into bullying. So, what uh, what years are the two characters? Are they like a third year, second year, or second year, uh, first year? Yeah, second, second year, first year. Aren't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. S- okay. Second first year. Uh, Got it. So. Yeah, so basically how it starts off is is, uh, this guy is just going to the library and he's trying to do his homework or work on his manga because apparently he's an artist (laughs) as well. And then uh, she's actually uh, Nagato, which is the girl. uh, She's actually part of this like delinquent girl uh, group in a sense where Hmm. all they really care about is just like talking to guys, having fun, stuff like that. Yeah, I think they're technically loud in the library. I think think they're part of the the, the gallery group. Uh, Okay. 
Like kind of, yeah. Because yeah. a couple just, girls was don't. I mean, they don't, they're not like fully Gyaru, but like they have like that the attitude and like some of the. Some yeah, some of the I want to say I want to say half the girls in the group fit the criteria because they're basically all dark skin, and then I mm-hmm. think half of them have the blonde hair. It's like uh, you don't have to be the dark skin and blonde hair. It's just like it's more like a, it's more like like a subculture like kind of like the valley girl. You don't yeah. have to look a certain way, but there's kind of right. a serious. It's like the way more the way you walk. act than like how you look. So. Okay. Right, but then they basically fit that vibe, and then yeah. apparently they went over to where he was, and they knocked over his book, and then I think the the thing that drew uh, Nagato to the main character, which is like Hachi Oji, uh, we'll just call him Hachi for short, uh, but she seems to have liked the guy because she was able to pick up his uh, his drawings that he had, and then um, I guess she could feel the effort or the heart that he put into his work, yeah. I mean... and then she was just drawn to the guy apparently. Really see that more in episode two because you don't you didn't really see that at all in episode one, but in episode two, when we were at the restaurant scene, like you really saw like she really was not like into like the guy with the music because she didn't feel any passion towards him compared to the senpai, or like she understands that it's like even she doesn't understand it, it's just something he's passionate about. I think she, I think she really likes like people who are who are passionate about things, so it's just, she just can't admit it. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so again, you don't really get much with uh episode one. You kind of just get introduced to the characters like just very briefly. And then I really hated Nagato at first, but then after episode two, when they start to flesh it out more and then you start to get I guess more accustomed to to how to interact. Um mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think it has some promise and I kinda wanna see where it goes. So it turns out to be a little bit more complex than what uh it seems like it's gonna be from episode one. I remember just reading a little bit of the manga, so like I wasn't really interested in it because it was because even then, even as a manga, it's still like it was a meme uh, manga as well. But, like, so I'm just curious how it goes, I guess. And like, it's not something like I like I don't I don't yeah I don't hate the characters either, so I'd be willing to just keep giving them a shot. I'm just more surprised mm-hmm. like with the the animation, especially the outdoor scenes with the animation are still really good. Like, I don't understand. Why there's so much effort going for like these? There scenes. is a lot of work going into it. Somebody is. This is really their passion project for backgrounds. <laughs> like, because <laughs> like because like, the indoor stuff, like like the the school and like the restaurants, they are they're they're pretty average. But then when you go like, outdoors, mm-hmm. they always have like the shadow in the puddle, or I mean the reflections in the puddle, and like and like the outdoor scene looks really nice for some reason. Ugh. They were inspired by the openings for Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Um. I have to say, I don't really have too much to say about it yet. I'm just kind of waiting to see where the show goes. But I do like the fact, like, for me, it kind of feels like a breath of fresh air. Like, I feel like, admittedly, I haven't seen that many romance anime. But from what I've seen, there does tend to be just, like, kind of the familiar patterns and typical kind of relationships that I've seen. There was one that I watched that was about, like, a teacher-student relationship, kind of. Um, I watched a little bit of it, and that one was kind of interesting. Um, just because it was a little, you know, n- not really like is societally accepted, things like that. So it's kind of interesting to see how that was analyzed. And this kind of gives me that same vibe of just like, I don't know, it's a different, it's definitely a different type of relationship between the two, these two characters. And they both have their really strong personalities each on their own. And I feel like they're going to kind of like help balance each other out. So mm-hmm. just excited to see how it progresses. Something yeah, different. Most, most definitely. Mm-hmm. I guess like I haven't really seen. A lot of rom coms with like, with a teasing girl. Like usually, it's like more the Sundere girl who's more annoyed. Mm-hmm. This is, I guess, mm-hmm. one of the first where it's like where she's really into the teasing, mm-hmm. and like because because uh, the shy guy's like he's, it's always been a thing. Where like yeah, it's just the teasing girl is more not really something you get often. So I guess yeah, that is mm-hmm. kind of different than what we usually get for rom coms. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll like keep that. yeah we'll keep an eye on this, and then I guess. It just just feels like I just feel like I just have to mention this because it's the meme show of the season. So, so that'll be it for uh, Nagatoro-san. Uh, let's move on to our next show. We got uh, I'm a Spider, So What? Second season. Or not second season, it's oh. part two, I guess, of the first season. Part yeah, yeah, part two. But man, this ooh, it's getting more and more <laughs> yeah, spicier. Take it, take it away, Koo. This episode was was wild, to say the least. Yeah, so we start off with uh, there seems to be just more elements of us kind of confirming the theory that whatever Kumiko is doing as a spider, like, is in the past. 
And then I think this episode kind of see the deal, right? Uh, so what happened was is there was a carriage that was going to a town, and apparently, like the baby that was in the carriage was a reincarnated uh, student. Um, and since they were being attacked by bandits, Kumiko had to step in and save them. And then she identified the baby, and uh, later on in the episode, uh, you know, she's fully grown, and uh, you see that you know time has passed. So. Uh, if anything, this just confirms that our theory was correct, that this was a big time skip uh, back and forth between Kumiko and then, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, and the other students when they were a teenager. And uh, okay. it looks like things got turned for the worse as to Hugo is now kind of in charge of this uh, rebellion against the king, uh, mainly because... Yeah, Shlane, that's what it was. Because uh, Shlane's father was going to make him the, the new king, since he's the hero, and he didn't want him to go out to the battlefield, he was going to make him the king so he would have to stay back and he wouldn't, like, possibly die. So the older brother didn't really like that, so that's why he, uh, you know, planned this whole rebellion. Hugo's kind of, like, leading the charge, because apparently now he has this crazy power to brainwash people. Yep. And uh, it's just setting off all this, like, crazy uh schemes into play so uh at, at the end of the episode basically you get to see that um you know this is where it finally kicks off and you have like the good side and the bad side and i think they're going to dive deeper into like who the villains are and then what their plan is no definitely um, I, I think you really nailed it um the only thing that i was gonna add is uh, man the show keeps on reminding me like how dark it can really get because you know a lot of the times we are seeing you know kumiko kind of have this carefree and um kind of uh joyous interactions with a lot of the fights that she gets into so you don't always take it like as serious potentially um but man when uh shlane was being brought into the king's quarters with his sister who he didn't know you know was brainwashed at the time and then the sister just literally blows a hole in the king's head i was just like well that 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 just happened and like they didn't shy away from showing the hole through this guy's head and you know mm -hmm. Shalane just absolutely like losing it at you know the realization of what just happened um so again you know kudos to, to them for that that's something that i think you know is really done well and tastefully in this show and then uh the other part is ku mentioned um you know learning about this other reincarnated child who um is a a vampire and kind of her involvement now, both that initial meeting in the past with Kumiko and her kind of having her, um, I guess, jealousy that she was reincarnated as this like cute vampire baby. And then meanwhile, you know, Kumiko was reincarnated as, as a spider creature. Yeah. And, you know, now she's striving to evolve to a form that is more human. Um, but then uh, also we see uh, the vampire, I think uh, her name was Sophia. We see mm -hmm. her kill the king of the elves. Potamus, he just like waltz up to him and literally cuts the guy in half. Um, so again, you know, it, it just is showing these kind of like power differences that are now being established between quote unquote the the good side of humanity of humans and elves and these these other beings versus you know the demon lord and, and their kind of party. Um, mm -hmm. But no, I'm I'm really excited to see you know now that we kind of at least would think have most of the characters in play. I'm sure you know there's still a lot from both sides that it's going to be yet to see but uh i'm really interested to see uh where we're going to go and kind of how does kumiko now get to the the present time that we're seeing with shlane and everyone and um mm -hmm. learning more there um yeah i guess the only other thing that i was thinking of is in terms of like who the vampire woman is i was thinking back to that episode when we see the reincarnated kids go on their like outdoor field trip mm -hmm. um i remember there was one of the kids that had like the nickname spooky because they were like very quiet and reserved similar to kumiko mm -hmm. uh and have like kind of longer disheveled hair and like i think part of the hair was covering you know one eye um so i'm thinking that that vampire girl might be that individual because i know they had an interaction with the the elf teacher when they were kind of talking one to another, when they were, had their like standoff, so mm -hmm. definitely, definitely interested to see kind of where things are going next. So very excited. Yeah, I think at this point, the only thing that hasn't been confirmed yet in terms of theory is is Kumiko really the Demon Lord? Because that had yet, yeah. had yet to be tied together <laughs> first. But <laughs> I'm still thinking it yeah. is, you know. No, I would think so too. And and I know you mentioned last week, you know, in the opening, they show uh, the Demon Lord and in, in well, you know, 
appears to be Kumiko fighting each other, and I did notice that this time I paid much more attention in the opening. So I am definitely interested, like you said, Ku, of like, all right, can we finally put this theory to rest? Like, everything they're showing us and even the the final interaction between uh, the vampire when she, you know, does like the mind link or whatever with uh, the demon Lord, Mm -hmm. you always just get this very similar speaking mannerism that is very Kumiko esque. So I don't Mm -hmm. see how it could be anybody but Kumiko. So, right. Yeah. But yeah, I'm glad the show has the 24 episodes because they've definitely shown to this point, there's a cast and a story that's definitely worth warranting having this many episodes. So, yeah, and in Europe, and I feel like the the evil side, uh, they're just way too overpowered. And then the hero <laughs> party, I don't, I don't see how they're going to overcome this at all. If True. They, but uh, man, maybe it would be great where if you know the good guys don't win for once, right? Maybe we finally have a show where you know this demon party and Kumiko they uh, they they get they get to have their fun, so to speak, and, and live out kind of the life that they want to live. Right. So that'll well, be interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it. All right, we're going to wrap it up there for I'm a Spider, So What? Uh, let's move on to our next show. Well, we got Shadow House. I know, Justin, you were really excited for uh, for this. Yeah, um, definitely very excited. But I'm interested to hear uh, hear your guys' thoughts because I came into the show knowing a little bit about like comparisons between um, Promise Neverland and it having more of a, you know, darker mystery behind it so um yeah i want to hear your guys' thoughts first of this latest episode if you don't mind uh well i have to admit that i kept on hearing people say like uh, in general like online and and whatnot saying that this was also partly like a slice of life genre a bit and i don't know exactly what the official definition of slice of life (laughs) is but like this is not how i would describe it and i i personally mean that in a positive way um I this episode see, featured life, yeah even now after I mean, well, first not episode, now, sure, but like, even with the second episode slice of life i can kind of see it. it was it was just it was just like just the maid and like and uh the noble girl then like mm-hmm. just those two like i guess it's more like normal every date it's like supernatural mm-hmm. it'd, be like, it'd be supernatural slash slice of life so mm-hmm. That's how I yeah because I I that, like that's that. what like Natsume Yujin show was like that was like um supernatural and slice of life but yeah this this second episode um they uh they do venture outside of the bedroom that we've been seeing and there is a scene with um another woman another shadow in her face and they've apparently been correctly linked with each other and i thought the scene was done really well like i felt like it was tense definitely reminded me more of um uh promise neverland on days <laughs> uh, again mm-hmm. i mean that in the best way possible i don't really know how high of a level of a creep factor we're supposed to get out of this because again i know nothing but my 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 radar was g- going off <laughs> i don't know what did you what did you think david um wasn't really like wasn't really a creep factor it was like it was more uncomfortable no? feeling like uh more yeah like when like when they were talking when the when sarah and the other doll and mia when they were talking that was more of a creep fact uh more uncomfortable factor it was more i guess the last scene was more creepy i guess but mm-hmm. i, guess, I like, think what really contributed to that later scene with uh kate and Emilico running into sarah and mia mm-hmm. in the garden was what we had seen of sarah prior to that when um Emilico, yeah, you know too. first gets to go outside of kate's room mm-hmm. and is you know introduced to the other um living dolls who are mm-hmm. you know responsible for cleaning the entire you know grounds of the uh, royal shadow family and how joyous of a interaction that was um because you could see you know the excitement in Emilico's face when she got to see you know all these other dolls just like her and you know kind of this joy and they sing songs with one another to you know clean up this house which as a living doll, you know, that's one of the things that I guess innately they love to do. They love to serve. Um, and how that, you know, very strongly contradicts with when they run into Sarah and Mia and Sarah being a completely different, you know, person, essentially, as this real mimic or mirror of Mia and like showing the emotions and Mia just absolutely chastising both Emilico and Kate for being, you know, failures in terms of like what a uh, a shadow family and living doll relationship could should be because i think even um 
Mia had threatened saying like, hey, don't don't make me tell like grandfather shadow like that you guys are, you know, mm -hmm. obsolete because he'll throw you away like nothing. So that's like kind of an, another layer now of like, all right, how like what is the goal of the relationships mm -hmm. between the shadow family and their their living serving counterparts? And more so, you know, this grandfather, I'm really interested to see what he's all about, because he sounds like he's just kind of a no nonsense, like his way or the highway. And he's got some some devious kind of ideologies as well for like kind of how their their royal family came to be in the first place yeah um so One thing I... oh you go ahead it's fine oh. it's not about the story but <laughs> oh, well no i was just gonna say um i thought it was really odd that not a single living doll told Emilico about i guess you know what to expect for her future or how to interact you know, when the shadow family is around, um, you know, proper decorum, like that seems fairly important if you're once you're leaving the bedroom. I also find it interesting that Kate didn't say anything about it, like because like that, that that previous thing, it could have just been for the narrative. It, it just is what it is. You know, we'll learn it as it happens and it might not have any further meaning. But I also thought it was interesting that Kate didn't say anything to Emil Emilico at any point. Like Kate to me yeah. definitely has. I mean, she lives in the house. She is part of the Shadow family. But she still somehow seems a little bit, like, ignorant to me as well. Like, she doesn't even have, like, the full story. Like, she still seems kind of innocent. And Definitely. Uh, I'm curious to see why and how far that goes. And <laughs> Yeah, I think, I again, know, I have you, nothing you, to go off of. you hit the nail on the head there. It's like, we don't truly understand, like, what is the hierarchy of mm -hmm. the Shadow family? And, and to your point, you know, was Kaylee newly kind of, in, inducted into the shadow family even from you know the very first episode we see these children being brought to this house and drinking whatever you know like, turns them into these uh these shadow family beings um but but i think the other thing as you mentioned taylor is like i wasn't necessarily surprised that the other living dolls didn't tell anything further to amilico because i almost feel like it's this thing where there's still just a lot of mystery and a lot of kind of facades being mm -hmm. put on where, you know, they're just kind of doing what needs to be done from purely a facial level because they're either being monitored or there's not really kind of yet this secret kind of area that they can really, you know, say things how they are. Um, because I think that is one thing with Sarah as well that we got to see. Um, I remember there was a scene where as she was walking either back from the interaction um with kate and amilico in the garden she kind of had this look of like upset on her face where you know she's realizing that she's just being used by uh mia her her shadow counterpart and she's not really you know with it even though when she's out in front of public you know she has to put up that facade mm -hmm. and then to david's point you know the final scene that we see when sarah returns to her sleeping quarters and we see all these, you know, handprints and everything of, of shadow soot all over the place. That also makes me think like that Mia is taking things further and potentially has gone into Sarah's room and, you know, either just beaten her or, or done something very dark. Because mm -hmm. obviously the shadow family don't view these living dolls as human. Mm -hmm. They're just there to mimic their emotion and serve mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So, again, there's so many theories and things that are really just drawing me in personally and uh, i can't wait to to learn more about the the other kids as well because i think there's what five other or four other individuals from the opening that we haven't yet seen yet so yeah something like that man a lot to unfold do we think they're even related this family do we even know I that i don't sure? think so because all the characters either. look so I different know. and again yeah. drawing back to that first scene when the kids are being brought into mm -hmm. this shadow family I feel like they're just, you know, hand-picking kids, like, out of whatever was, this dystopian yeah. world is and just, just indoctrinating them to continue this bloodline or whatever. I need to go back and watch that scene. <laughs> I yeah. didn't pick up on that quite at the same time. I'll go back and watch it. Because, like, it's a huge house. And, like, I was thinking, like, do they, all these living dolls, do they really have a counterpart? Like, a shadow, a shadow counterpart? That's a lot of people to have. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking, like, there's, mm -hmm. like, if, they, if they're not all connected, then it's got to be a bunch of extra living dolls. And then... I was, I and mean, I know, like Justin, you're you you still think they're like they're humans, but I don't know. Just when when Emiko just fell from that that I guess second floor story and like didn't get injured at all. I was like, yeah, 
that, so, uh, that definitely just, led me more she to it. Like, okay. She got a scrape. She got a scrape on her name, David. Come why, on. Why don't, you, why don't you jump off your second store, <laughs> second story floor, yeah. and you can walk with a scrape, Taylor. How about that? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, think it was interesting, too, kind of to your point of when um, Amilico returned from after the time that Kate got like really upset for what she did to the doll, and, and Amilico got super dirty. And then she sat in the like cleaning yeah. chamber, and it's literally just that huge air tunnel like pushing against them to get all the soot off them. So that was a point where I was like, okay, you know, more so maybe they're not human, but I, man, yeah. I can't help but feel like there is something where it's like they could have be been almost too easy point. for them to be. Maybe yeah, at some point, so. but it's just you feel, yeah. Well, I guess because usually in anime, like like the humong the humongous, like it's usually like are really artificially made. And it doesn't even have to be from humans, so yeah. And it could it could still be that too, and that maybe at some point they're going to strive to want to be more than just a a living doll, like we've yeah. seen in, in other kind of humunculus or doll uh, related kind of uh environments. Um, yeah. And then um, I'll just yeah. say real quick, um, this episode, the first half was actually the life life thing. I was actually not getting interested as much, but it was after that second half that I actually got more interested in in the shell. So. Mm -hmm. Feel totally. that. Um, yeah, the yeah. only other thing I would say is the last little thing is I am interested in terms of when Kate got really upset and the soot like solidified mm -hmm. and Amilico couldn't break it off. So I'm interested just to see more of like what kind of abilities or uh, I guess um, like properties their properties they biologically exactly. Thank you. have. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Oh my God. I just remember all these little things. I, I know we're probably well over time here. But I'm also interested in Amilico being able to to read more and more because I know she was trying to read the notes in her room in this episode, and there was like a certain mm -hmm. like word that she couldn't read, and I felt mm -hmm. like that was about to be just another like lore oh, nugget I didn't, of like something didn't think about deeper. That. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, man, this just uh, really gets well, my brain flown of like all the conspiracies and no, things. No, it's, it's great that you're enjoying this. So. Yeah. So that's why it's, it's definitely all in my top two or three, I'd say, for yeah. this season for me. Same for yeah, me. I, I, just moved the t I just moved the time to 10 minutes. <laughs> Let's go. We're, we're good. It's, good. Okay. No, no, no. it's, it's, good. Down it's, it's fine. All right. We'll leave it here but for yeah, now. We'll definitely that's have all, more that's talk about have. next week. <laughs> so, that'll be it for our Shadow House. Let's move on to our next show. We got Hige Hero. Yes, I have joined Hige Hero. And uh, good, good. honestly, it's real. The MC is awesome. Like he's a, uh, he's he's with uh, well, like a ten, a ten gentleman. I think is how I put the comment. <laughs> he, even though to be fair, this guy definitely is uh, putting. Uh, he's being a lot more generous than I think most people would. <laughs> so there's like no in hell this would ever happen in real life. <laughs> yeah, Just I was gonna say <laughs> no. All way. the stars aligned. Of you know, he's obviously making that bank doing whatever kind of software development well, position. But that is true. Yeah, that, right. that, he is a software developer. That too. Uh, I, just, I, uh, I just want to give a shout out to his friend. I probably I, I forgot his name, but like his friend's also helping him with like a lot of decisions that the whole situation. The main, yeah, you know, like the phone yeah. case yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So his friends deserve a lot, a lot too for helping like guide the friend in a lot of his decisions too. He's a bro. Actually, Hashimoto. Hashimoto, yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it, like, it's uh, I don't know, like it's it's very it's I mean like, the, the comedy is the comedy is fun. Um, it's uh I don't know, it's uh I guess I, it's, all the characters are likable so far. Um, it's nice to not really go down like that that creepy factor, even though it's it's always going to be there. Oh, well, you know, a uh, high school student with uh, how how old is he? Do we, is he twenty six? Twenty six, I think. Yeah, twenty six. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it's more of like it's nice to not have to go over that line, but it's always gonna be hanging over there because it's it's anime. It, it's it'll. I'm hoping it kind of just stays on. I, I actually am really hoping it's just both of them kind of getting their lives together and then just kind of being able to you know figure their their uh, you know like figure the stuff out like themselves and then just kind of like uh, move on. Uh, I don't really care much for his boss actually. Um, yeah, that's what but, I was gonna say. When you yeah. said all the characters are likable, do you still like yeah. the boss? That's I the only like... one. I think she's a bitch. <laughs> So. Damn. I mean, like, like is yeah. a difficult word. It can mean many things. I Do I like her? Kind of. I mean, <laughs> you know, from a a purely admiration of her physical. Yes. You from know, a visual attributes, perspective. Visually, she is nice to look at. But yes. from you know what we've seen in the second episode now of her wanting to you know again bring uh, Yoshida out to dinner and you know specifically ask him if now he has you know a significant other that he's seeing. I'm just like. 
You oh, yeah. bitch. Like, Why do you care? Get out of his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though you're his boss, get out of his life. It's, it's the common thing of, you know, you, you give your everything for a girl potentially. And then, you know, once you're now unobtainable, oh, now the script's all changed. Yeah. And now you want me. And it's like, yeah. okay. It's like, oh, okay. Also, yeah. Oh, you shaped. <laughs> You look like uh, okay. Yes. That's the whole thing where it basically can't forget the the title drop is all. To be okay, one to be fair, like I mean that that picture barely shows up, and they, they, these people that's are like, "Oh man, you shaved!" Like week. what? Shaved what? That, and it's that's just like was, barely that, anything. That, that's what I was saying last week. Yeah, yeah. That was but like I, I did like I did kind of like his like his little like model thing where he basically says like uh, was it with the like what he thought like shaving meant. I thought like okay, I can I can get behind that. I thought yeah. that, that sounded actually pretty good. I thought it was gonna be something about how it's just like oh it's because like I would look younger or some some dumb thing like that but like his uh his whole thing on it I think I thought it was actually like really good I was like oh damn that was actually yeah. pretty nice what uh what do you guys think about this uh coworker that they're trying to introduce as a potential uh <laughs> love interest okay. for for Yoshida I mean, let's be honest I we've seen this anime many times yeah, she has no shot <laughs> yeah I mean she she's she she's the equivalent of, of Iroha she you know? might. <laughs> Yeah, she might have a chance. <laughs> it's like it's like I mean I like like she's fine. She's it's like I like her, uh, but in actuality, no shot. Well, Which... I guess I'm just saying like to your points right earlier, where if you're like, oh, like you know, I don't necessarily want it to be that Yoshida and and Sayu fall for one another. So it's like, okay, if they both you know just help each other oh, grow, yeah. then realistically yeah. Yoshida is probably going to go with this this coworker yeah. that they've now pretty clearly dropped that she has feelings for yeah. him. Yeah, I suppose. Oh. That, yeah, in my mind, and the way I've, I've, I've actually laid it out, like, I like Iroha is my favorite snafu character, <laughs> so I would be perfectly fine with this being, uh, like, you know, was it canon or like legit? Mm-hmm. But in actuality, for how anime goes, they never win. <laughs> it's so sad. Rip strand stream. Yeah. <sighs> Not yet, sir. We don't know yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, my bad. Yeah, we knew everything was set in stone in snafu, but this could possibly be different. I have hope. <laughs> There is a chance. Um, and even though I think his boss is a bitch, I mean, I, I'd be okay with that, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than the uh, other, the uh, the main, uh, was it like the, I guess, I don't even know, I don't even know if we'd call it the main pairing, but um, main girl, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the other two options would be better. I think uh, like a whole, French, a whole friendship thing, and like I said, like they're like getting their lives together and then kind of like, you know, finding their own paths, I think would be perfect. What do you think, Koo? I mean, you've been too quiet over there. Sorry, I've been kind of like... I, I, yeah, I know me and Fred have been... Yeah, we've I'll, been I'll dominating. Be, be we, we have those... <laughs> Look, if those it aspects. was me, Goto all the way, right? But... Is that the know. boss? Yeah, the yeah. boss. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, like I said, it's it's kind of hard because you, you only really have three options at this point, and then... Um, the one that has the most potential, I think, she's underage, so that's a no-go. But if you also go down that route, it's kind of a creepy route as well. So you don't want to, like, go towards, like, that that ending or that direction without, like, horrible backlash, right? And then with how they're approaching it right now, we're just kind of, like, teetering on the edge between what's acceptable and not acceptable. I think that's what's drawing you in as a viewer. Um and like like we all mentioned that the new chick uh Yuz- Yuzaha, uh she she clearly has no chance but <laughs> i guess it's nice to give you like one option as well hope right but <laughs> normal hope yeah. yeah but given given everything that's happened though dude like goto mm, like top tier when it comes <laughs> to like physical appearance so hey, i man. really can't complain too much as she's shown she can hang you know she's one of those girls that uh isn't afraid to go out to the the bar scene have a good time get some you know some fried meat and all that, so... I think she'd have a sense of humor, too, because, like, the whole thing where he, you know, asks her her breast size, and she, you know, she replies. Yeah, you know, she's 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 willing to play the game with you a little bit, so yeah, I'm I, I, with that, right? I didn't even know yeah. that letter existed. <laughs> but, <laughs> wow. but, yeah. Hey, man. Uh, I'll give a quick, Stella, Stella quick shout-out to the computer screen when they were staying uh, over time. I saw the Jala in the, on the computer, even yeah, though it's was, fake. Was it legit? I mean, it's really hard yeah. to At least see. Had the, the, the formatting yeah, yeah. correct? It had the layout, yeah, but it's probably fake. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah the but one Darren thing I would say was... that. Oh, right, go, ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. Uh, I was Darren just gonna say, say. Darren, Darren also makes the point that like the age, age gap is not anything like Usagi drop. Ooh. But it, but still, we that, don't need to go a, towards that a, that thing though. That's an extreme yeah. in now. Yeah, we're yeah. going for the higher <laughs> bar here. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sorry, but, Justin, uh, go ahead. No, uh, I, I think if anything, um, I'm wondering if there's going to be that point where, you know, they're obviously going to develop feelings for one another. And if I would think Yoshida is probably going to be the one that he'll realize kind of this difference and, and kind of have to let Sayu down softly in a sense. So I, I definitely could see that something he is the uh, adult. that happens. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and he has, you know, those constant reminders from his coworker that it seems like in most interactions, like, yeah, he's helping him out with picking out a phone and all these things. But, you know, he does also give that reminder of like, Hey, you know, you are, you know, harboring a, a high school girl and, you know, you kind of have to step back and, and think about how this looks. Yeah, so. and didn't somebody didn't somebody like just get caught in the news for something too? Didn't they have like that like in the in playing in the in the anime? Like was it the TV, radio, oh. or something? Do you remember that? Like somebody's like, oh, somebody I was just know. blah blah blah. I didn't. Uh, uh, it, it, it was mentioned. In, it was in the news, but I forget what kind of media it was broadcast on. But was that it also was the mentioned. First episode? I, I sorry, because I I watched them both like at the same time, so I'm not sure which one is which. Uh, I, I think it was in the first episode. Yeah, because okay. when, okay. when he brought it up to his coworker, I think for the first time, I think his coworker was the one I brought it up. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Ah, uh, okay. I couldn't remember. But yeah, um, so the signs yeah. are all, all there. <laughs> all the signs yeah. and the I mean, help. don't don't get me wrong. Like, I love the interactions between yeah. both Sayu and Yoshida. And, you know, it kind of warms my heart in some instances to see the kind of the, the growth with each other and them having those real moments of, you know, neither of them is kind of hiding their emotions or, or sugarcoating things. And I yeah. think that's where the show is really going to, you know, start to shine eventually. Um yeah. But yeah, again, it's always one of those things where it's like, uh, there always has to be, you know, the, the society <laughs> things of just like, all right, you know, these are the ways things are. So, okay, we yeah. can't take it further than this. Otherwise, you know, we're like, all right, <laughs> maybe we cross some lines somewhere. So, yeah. It's going to happen. Like, you oh. got to have it happen. <laughs> I mean, right? I'm, I'm still just hoping it stays at the father-daughter bond and well, let's leave it at that. Well, all right, let me ask you guys a question then, right? Uh, do you guys believe that uh, guys and girls can just be friends? Mm-hmm. Totally. Even in I that kind so. of environment. Mm. I mean, right on their environment. It's a lot tougher. I think you have to be more resilient in terms mm-hmm. of your definition of the relationship, especially when you know, in in this current environment, they're they're living with mm-hmm. each other in a very small place. But um, no, I think that's that's totally fine. I think I'm just biased in the sense of like, in you know, the space of of anime and kind of a lot of these stories, it does mm-hmm. seem to kind of teeter towards those other spaces and i i mean get me wrong isn't the age of consent much lower in japan i think so in it some is. instances so from their standards like that's completely fine and you know i'm probably just biased from my uh my american views <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> hey fair fair play all around at the end of the day i'm enjoying the show i'm enjoying the growth of these characters i'm enjoying all Maybe. the cute moments and mm-hmm. um i'm really glad that i picked it up because it was a show that i originally did not have on my radar same so. same uh, everybody had like the hype for it. I was like, all right, I'll give it, you know, these two episodes a watch. Loved it. And I'm going to continue. Yeah. And yeah, Darren, definitely agree. There's, you know, no sure answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, but there is, but we'll leave that for next episode. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so we should move on. Please yeah. join our special <laughs> podcast for that at a future date. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. We're right there for Higay Hero. So, sounds move on, good. Move on to our next show. Uh, uh, let's talk about uh, Moriarty the Patriot. Which again, uh, this episode they brought up the French Revolution again, and they even, they even brought up the, the actual. They portrait, took it a step further, man. The, the, the portrait of Rob's Pierre, and then more yes. pictures of the actual French Revolution, and it just all sounds like a conspiracy theory. So, dude, more and more Assassin's Creed esque, where it's yeah, like, okay, it's... you know, we're we're all related at the end of the day, and actually, you know, the person that kicked off this whole social revolution for the French Revolution, oh yeah, that was a descendant of the Moriarty you know, family. It's oh, like, the, oh, the Holmes family. Or was it a uh, Holmes family? Thank Holmes, you. Holmes, yep. Um, that's yeah, why, yeah. So that's why like, the older oh, brother okay. is taking his loyalty because he feels he has to atone for his yes. ancestors. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, it's this really important historical, like, uh, historical event. It was actually just a social experiment for the British Empire because that's how you guys make yourself so important that way. Yep. I mean, and then it gives, you know, uh, uh, a foundation for Moriarty and, and their group as the Lord of Crime for them to stand on and be like, hey, we're pretty much trying to do the same thing now in England. And that's kind of the reason why well, Mycroft decides to, then, to bend the knee and allow them to 
to it continue was, with there. It was even more funny how like how um like when they said like like because you know in the, like the where Rob's peer is saying how oh he, he basically lelouched it where he's like oh I'm just like everyone hate me and then they just gotta kill me in the end and then <laughs> and then it made it sound like yeah. like Moriarty wants like the Moriarty families want to do the same thing they're gonna make everyone hate them and then we'll we'll die for their sins kind of thing it's like wow oh, I didn't even wants think to, about that everyone just wants to lelouch it which is yeah when in, oh in like, man when in the actual like, history it's like Rob's peer like he basically like where yeah like. Dude, now I definitely think either uh, Albert or um, William is definitely more so William because, you know, he's like the headmaster mind of everything. He will be now kind of a Lelouch-esque, like, that's sacrificial what, that's, pawn. That's why I feel like they were alluding to in this episode. Like, they, I feel like that's what they were basically saying to the, like to Mycroft. No, definitely. And, and I think it would be fitting, too, because in terms of, like, that, the rivalry between Sherlock and Moriarty... That would definitely be a fitting way where, you know, Sherlock would never be able to kind of, I guess, win because if Moriarty, if he, you know, self-sacrifices himself, I don't think that would be something that Sherlock would be happy with at the end of the day. But it's but it's definitely fitting given what we what we saw from this episode and discussions around see, these kind of things. I can kind of see Sherlock acting that way. Like, I think, yes, yes, like he sees that as, as, as justice. It's just like he's not gonna do it in the heavy hand way that Moriarty does. Mm. So I think I feel like Moriarty Fair. like he does it just because like he feels like it's like that's like the only way to end it. Like he's he feels like he's gonna get caught eventually. And so what better way than just to like 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 fulfill your goals and then like and then just take it all on the blame so that it doesn't distract from the problem of the classes the classism in Britain. Yeah, right. It's the purpose of of setting a message and changing the the current kind of operating environment so i uh, i totally agree there and then uh again kind of similar to um you know holmes being a a ancestor involved in this social experiment the very end i'm not gonna lie when when irene you know did the name drop with her new identity like, i was just like i was thinking this like, what, one what? is a, a big stretch where they're just giving fans of the series like yeah. haha like did you enjoy it and for I me know, I, just, I was kind of like it's cute, but I'm like, it doesn't. It just, it just felt like it a feels Japanese. Forced. It just felt like a Japanese person. Be like, what's an, what's a British like name we could just drop in here that would be cool. So yeah. It's, it's like it's like you know like when we try like when like if you try to have have a Western series and you have a katana, it's like let's just name it Masamune. <laughs> you know, let's let's right? name our let's name our, our swordsman Usashi. Does that sound cool? That's like yeah. It's like, it's so, like yeah, let's, let's, it, let's just name drop James Bond just because we can. It sounds yeah. cool. We're and, Japanese. And to no be one fair, cares. It was, yeah, it was something that I totally wasn't expecting. But as soon as she said her name, I was just like, no. And then when she, you know, James, James I, Bond. And I'm I didn't like, think about it at oh, first. Like, I was like, I was like, why are they dragging this out? Like, why? Like, it's, it's got to be like, what? what is it going to be? Like, it's got to be something like simple or normal. And then it's just Bond. Mm -hmm. It's like, God damn. Yeah. So now it's like. I totally agree to your point. I'm sure it's just from, you know, Japanese writing perspective, them just taking the low hanging fruit, so to speak, of what they think will really hit and be like, hey, <laughs> we know that. But now it's like from a lore perspective in, in the anime's lore, it's like, all right, how are you going to make, you know, this now work? Like, is Irene just going to be kind of this this agent of both of Moriarty's group and Mycroft? Because if we think about James Bond, like he's part of mi6 which is like british secret yeah. service and, and mycroft is the head of like the secret service essentially so i don't know i i i enjoyed it i i think um the show is still kind of doing everything it, it did well the first season um but i'm interested to see now where like where do we where do we go next now that we've kind of resolved this uh this you know hidden dirty secret of uh, of England and, and the royal family and everything and um is it now just going to go back to like you know every few episodes is is going to be a it different just, case and now I, we're just building like up to arc, the final confrontation I feel like this arc with like with Irene just like the whole like like scandal of like with like the documents it, it felt like it was building up something big just leading from last season or, or like the first part and I just felt like nothing big like it didn't have the big payout that I was expecting and I thought it was gonna be this huge thing of like this huge scandal involving the entire british empire it's like no we're just gonna like resolve it really quick just so we can save irene so yeah so i guess i had bigger expectations for for the arc so 
I guess. I agree. So I, I hope going forward, I I mean, my favorite parts of the show was like Sherlock versus Moriarty. So hopefully we get more of that. More mostly like Definitely. I want I I mean my favorite character is still Phil uh, William Moriarty. So like, so I I want to see him like do do it like execute his plans, do do the the mind games. So. We'll yeah. see how it goes. I mean, let's let's definitely hope we get there and that we don't have. I feel like they're going to do more backstory in terms of uh, Moriarty's oh, yeah. other like right two hand men. Yeah, the Colonel and the the one boy. So yeah, I that's guess. probably going to be sprinkled in there as well. But we'll see. Overall, yeah. you know, production IG doing a phenomenal job as as always, and it's, uh, it's a I good, really like, good I thing like, to look at. I like that one um, theme song he's playing, like like when they're talking. I don't know. That's just like stuck in my head now. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like, know what you're talking like about. Like the, no. the, the, the I mean, iconic one of like the story of, of the series. Like it's just stuck in my head now. <laughs> Every time I watch it. <laughs> hey man, that's how you know you got good shows on your hand when it goes above and beyond just the storytelling. It's the small details. So, yep. so yeah, that's gonna be yeah. it for oh. we're already the Patriot. Uh move on to our next show. We got Mashiro no Alto. Jen, you still hating on the mom's voice? She was not in this episode. <laughs> okay. Oh, so maybe it was only a one time thing? Who knows? Oh, she's coming back, baby. Oh, no, yeah, we can't she escape from back. Umiko. <sighs> she's, she's the star of the show, man. Like, from what we've seen of her, like, it's all about her, baby. She'll uh, be back. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. We'll keep it at that, then. Uh, no, it's... um, Actually, uh, Ku, is this still your favorite show? Yeah, yeah, was... most definitely. Okay. Uh, well, just because it's... Uh... It's it's the story is just getting more and more complex, right? Uh, it turns out that the reason why the uh, uh, what was her name was it Shuri, the mm-hmm. the girl that started the uh, the Shamisan appreciation. Yep. Uh, the reason why she's trying so hard to create the club and uh, like recruit others is because apparently her grandmother heard of uh, Setsu's uh, grandfather's like uh, masterpiece in a sense. And then that was back when uh, she was a lot younger, and then uh, Setsu's grandfather was like a traveling magician in a sense. So in the story, it says that, you know, it takes them a long time to master their piece. And every time they play their piece at a different period of time, it it's like a different uh, song in a sense, right? Uh, so with that being said, it might not be the same as to how Setsu remembers it or um, what he can play for, for her grandmother. So... He doesn't want to play for her until the end of the episode where he's finally able to kind of overcome uh, that feeling that he had. And he's just willing to do what he can to help others. And uh, so there, there's that story. And then it turns out that uh, Shuri's friend, uh, she was actually watching the live stream of when Setsu first played in a, in a band as an opener. Uh, so she knows what Setsu's fully capable of, and uh, apparently, I guess, she's part of the club now, too. So I'm sure she's going to have some kind of, like, crazy backstory, I guess. Um, but, yeah, with, with each episode that comes up, it, they're, like, fleshing out the support cast, and it looks like there's always some kind of, like, emotional backstory. No, uh, I definitely agree there, and, uh, and I think I'm glad to see this supporting cast really start to uh, expand as well. Um, one of the things that I initially wasn't expecting was the introduction of uh, Kamiki Seiryu um, mm-hmm. and him being, you know, the alumni of the school. I thought he was actually going to be like either like an older student or someone in the same grade that they're going to be introduced to. Mm-hmm. So um, it's interesting now to see that relationship come into play and more so that he knows the um, girl from Setsu's past that was upset with Setsu for not you know, wanting to compete with her when they were both at a younger age and now, you know, all these kind of involvements in the world of, you know, Shamisen playing starting Mm -hmm. to, to collide and, and, you know, attribute to, you know, each of these Shamisen players having their own distinct, you know, voice, if you will, of how they, they play their music. Their their sound. Yes. (laughs) Yes. 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 Their sound. They just kind of, they kind of constantly just, uh, the uh, what was it like basically where this guy just keeps like losing his like way of sound and they were like where he, when he was like challenging that one guy uh-huh. and where he just like wasn't really trying or something he was just kind of like, playing just to play yeah <laughs> so, it's uh like it gets into the whole like anime trope where like oh i can't play if i don't have like the feeling for it like I cut this lost two. yeah um <laughs> I don't really know if I have much more to say about the show. 
Um, I, I, I can, I can uh, pop in and just say that I, I feel badly, but I'm just not quite enjoying it as much as everybody else. I just feel like perhaps I think, I think that for me, maybe I just don't have enough of like a, an attachment to the instrument. And for me, it's kind of like this, this, all this talk of like, oh, the sound is muddy, but now you've got your sound back and now it's like a gentle mountain breeze. I can't really get behind stuff like that. So that is totally a personal thing, 100%. It's really nothing against the show. It reminds me a lot of, like, Chihaya Furu, how, how that is all the show is about and is, is, is you know, the cards that they play, and, and that's what this is, too. So I, I, this one might be the last episode for me. This definitely feels like a very, like, artistic thing mm-hmm. where basically they have to, like, you know, get everything completely, like, right or they have to be in the right mindset or the feeling for it. Where it, I mean, it's, I still don't like really. I don't. I don't hate the show. Um, it's, yeah. uh, I'm still gonna be watching it. I would say the one thing that I that I will gripe about is I still feel there are some pieces that are just overly dramatic. Yes. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yes, that is that is the <laughs> and, thing. Yeah. You know, I, I I I admittedly I've been able to look past that, but it is one of those things that's in the back of my head of like you know as as Kuhn mentioned you know as, as the resolution of this week's episode was that. You know, Setsu, albeit, you know, still realizing that he has a long way to go to refine his confidence in his own sound. He's now willing to, you know, help out Shuri and give that um, potential closure for her and the grandmother. Um, but, you know, th- it always seems to be like this this clash of like, you know, one minute he's like very down and very just like in his head and trying to be like almost philosophical with it. And then you have the next moment where it's just like, Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go do this. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, okay, sure. And, and yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's like, all right, if you if you you know have the resolve to do it, and and you're about to hit us with some real badass music, like I- I'm all for it. Yeah. But you know, if I have to stand back and look at it critically, it's like, all right, you know, we're acting <laughs> like again, everything is like a life and death, and even the uh, the what performance. It is <laughs> right, and that's He's when you just know a very you very have... delicate boy. <laughs> I mean, hey, at the end of the day, that's when you know you have passion because when you get yeah. that passion, it does become a thing of life and death in in some instances. Mm-hmm. So uh, I can respect that, but yeah, it is funny if you if you really want to nitpick and even think about like uh, Kamiki's performance and like you know Setsu being like pulled in and then just having like this over dramatic like oh my god like he's a light in the darkness and all these things. I'm just like. <laughs> All right, cool, Kingdom Hearts. Like, let's 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 slow our roll here and let's uh let's keep going. Just but, uh, to, you yeah. just don't get it. I know, right? I just don't have the high class. Yeah, you just I, don't understand. Again, I'm, I'm not Just a shamisen fine. master. Or maybe I need to I need to go to Japan, spend you know a few months with a with a renowned shamisen player, and then maybe I'll get it. Maybe I'll have a <laughs> fraction of an understanding. But hey, I, I I still really like it. I'm willing to look past you know those things. I think it shouldn't let people think it's a bad show by right. any means right. I, I think it you know no. is very solid um and again for all of us i think at the end of the day we can all say like hey there, there's a lot of you know jammers that you can put on in the background mm-hmm. and just kind of you know bob to so i also i do think the show will just kind of like how cool is saying like it's just, I, I do think it's just going to continue to get better and better um because yeah. like i mean the, the reason why i like brockamon is just because of like well, like all the relationships he made and also just ridiculous comedy but still uh i feel like this has those like uh, yeah I, I feel like this show can do that uh, I, but I, I think it may just need a couple more episodes to kind of just build more of that connections with everybody, or maybe just tone down like the exaggeration, the dramatic of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's that's too. Yeah, it is very dramatic. Um, but we'll, see. we'll see. That's what makes it so fun and anime like, right? I I like dramatic yeah. stuff to an extent. I mean, you, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I, but I don't know if anybody else has anything else. All right, yeah, I'm all right. Good. and and the. Uh, the drama, the dramaticization <laughs> right there. Went uh-huh. in there for Mashiro no Oto and then go to go to Bakuten because you know these sports shows aren't dramatic at all, right? Oh hell no! This one, Never. this one actually has like a little bit of dramatics just because like they were forcing this man to do I don't know how many backflips in a row, um, or he wasn't going to be able to make the team, or he had to sit out or something. Drama. It was a challenge. <laughs> I think it is both because it, yeah. it depends on who you ask. Sounds like hazing. I, I feel like that. I feel like the, the coach took it as a challenge, but I took it as the guy who had to do the backflips as drama. <laughs> so, because he he was basically breaking down. It's like, oh, you guys are the third years. This is your last chance. And yeah. He, it, it was he was more doing it for them than or than himself. Maybe. Uh, maybe. 
Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it's always something that you have in these uh, sports shonen, you know, shows with these tropes of the third years kind of building all their aspirations and consistent reminders, even with, you know, a show like Haikyuu that has a lot of crazy going for it. Like, right. there are many times that those three, you know, senpais are, you know, constantly reminiscing of like, oh, this is our, our final tournament together, our last time, but like, yeah. god damn, we're so proud of the first and second years, like, they're gonna do amazing things, so, hey, was that, again, was that moment? I, I'm fine with it, um, and to Taylor's oh. point, you know, I can more so view it as like, it's a challenge, like, it's like, hey, at the end of the day, like, we're trying to do this um, large kind of goal for us, and it's like, you gotta be able to hang, so mm -hmm. let's get to it, let's start chopping. Yeah, let's start bit. flipping in this yeah. sense <laughs> back flipping <laughs> uh, but, like, just like a little like just a little side note uh the high cue when that happens when that like overturn happens when the third years are gone dude oh my like, God. Really it'll hurt it'll I'm hurt, like it'll hurt really there. bad but that's why it always <laughs> seems like for most shows when the third years leave they're just like all right we can't cut it cut it we, we can't we can't do this <laughs> no, like they're no. gone it's like yep. you know <laughs> yeah so. it, yeah, so that that's I know that's gonna hurt, but no, I, it's like still like the uh, animation, everything is is really uh, it's really nice. Yeah. Um, they finally got like the the their main six people established, even though uh, I feel like was it this guy did like those create like those insane amount of backflips like with within a week, but I, I kind of feel like they're alluding to where he's more of a visual learner than actually having it explained. Um, I think that was the whole point of like watching that guy do backflips in that crazy beautiful animation. Mm -hmm. Um, the Kageyama of of uh, gymnastics, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it could be. I mean, it, different instruction types and different learning types and stuff like that. Um, I think it maybe also is supposed to just show like it, I think it's supposed to also be building up their friendship though too. Exactly like mm. Kageyama and Hinata, how they their personalities just mesh well together for challenging each other and pushing each other to grow and. I think that it's both. I think it's it's both what you said and also just how they communicate that works for them. Um, Definitely. Uh, but he needs a uh, MC in this show needs a little bit more of uh, Hinata's uh, personality. <laughs> I think I actually kind of like him the way that he is. He's just like very. He's very still got like the, very happy. He still has the earnestness of Hinata. He's just not. He just has a couple more brain cells. He's just a little bit more calm. He's not constantly flying off the handle and, you know, <sighs> but over the that. top with emotions. <laughs> he reminds me of a lot more of like Yuri from Yuri on Ice. He has more of that mm -hmm. personality, I feel like. Um, and right. I feel like, I feel like, um, what, I'm sorry, what's the other guy's name? I, I always forget because. Kyrie. <laughs> yeah right yeah just, I, just cut <laughs> I actually feel like he reminds me i in my head i keep calling him uh megami because he Misato? reminds me yeah oh yeah, yeah yeah he reminds me so much of that character from jujutsu kaisen that's that's so it's hard for me to think of him as anything mm -hmm. else Guys, I'm who, who are we talking about the other guy the guy that you keep calling oh, Kageyama. Kageyama. His oh, name's oh I, I actually hit it okay i thought we were talking yeah, about yeah. Maybe one of the other no like, no no <laughs> man as i call it you were right you were right <laughs> all right I, I do think that this show needs to start, and I mean, I know we're only on episode episode two, so like, I'm I'm perfectly patient. I don't think it's like too slow or anything, but I do think it needs to start, um, just kind of going other characters a little bit more and fleshing them out. I mean, because really, this yeah. entire episode was just about nailing. Well, they, they had to establish the team still, yeah. and then you get to go in the character development. So I'm yeah. sure we're gonna get those. To, to your point, dude. Now that we have those six kind of uh, members established now hopefully like you said we can start to see the other schools as they're preparing for uh oh, that too yeah. their upcoming competitions because yeah we only have 12 episodes for this show so it's like all right you get your characters established you maybe give each of them a little bit of background apart from we've already seen it's like okay now we need to get into tournament mode and these other teams so and make, getting to that end goal real quick <laughs> this will be make or break Exactly. I will say one thing, side note, and a quick gripe when they were like going and moving into the dorms, the sports dorms for the men's rhythmic gymnastics, and they first see the fancy dorms for some other sport. I don't know which sport. Uh, and they're like, oh, my God, this is where it is. And he's like, nope, keep walking, keep walking. And they keep going to this like <laughs> uh, your house. Typical. And, <laughs> like in the woods. Um, these I kids that too. have no idea how lucky they are. Like, they're so lucky to be able to live in dorms when they're in high school. Like, it's not like we got to do that. I think that'd be so much fun. Like, even if you do have to live in that house, that house was still pretty <laughs> nice, honestly. I, mean, I didn't think it was that ever... Huh? I didn't think it was that bad. No, I didn't think it was that bad <laughs> either. Yeah, that's what you're it saying. It's like, it definitely continued to, to add to the dramatism that a lot of <laughs> these uh, 
these shows have. I I more so love the the part where um the the main character you know comes to the the facility that they're at and he he experiences the uh, I forget what they call it. It's not like a trampoline, but like the the floor mat that's all like oh, you yeah. know bouncy. He's just like, wow, this is great. Like, why don't we have one of these? And then you know the the assistant coach comes up and he's like, yeah, because it costs like five hundred thousand dollars or something like ludicrous. And I'm just like. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> in USD, I looked it up actually. So, what did I say it was? Was it like 13,000 or 130,000 yeah. or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> embellishing, <laughs> but yeah. some ridiculous number that uh, it was yeah. high. Yeah. They, yeah. they do that as well pretty pretty regularly with, <laughs> with sports shown in shows of just naive main characters getting involved in a new sport and not realizing, you know. Well, I think it would have been different if. But it's funny. Yeah. I think, if there's, I think it would have been different if their school was actually known for their gymnastics. But I mean, if they only had four members and they were like still solid, but you know, they weren't winning anything, I mean, why, like, why would the school give them yeah. that money? You know? Yeah. And that's the same thing of tropes. It's like, you know, th- they go to a different school and they see how nice things are. And then they're like, so where's our facility? And then, you know, they're playing like outside, <laughs> like in the dirt. And they're just like, yeah, that's what we got. And he's just like, Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, so. a, like they, they point over to like an area that's just all like destroyed and, and just broken <laughs> down. They're like, yeah. oh, that shed over there? No, no, you got that field. That next yeah, that, that is, yeah, that's us. <laughs> but uh, no, again, another show for me that uh, definitely uh, caught me off guard and uh, glad to be uh, joining it with you guys. So it's been a lot of fun so far. I am episodes. enjoying it as well. Yeah. Me too. I've been open up to like a bunch of sports and I mean, I never used like high started it. Now I just kind of keep going. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I don't even, I don't even like sports at all in real life, There's uh, a... but I love sports. anime. Yeah. Now, now there's Stren's definitely not a drought for, for sports shows. ready to do so. those 10 backflips. Uh, no, nah, it's okay. We'll leave no, it. Uh... No, no, Next time we come over restraining, show me off your 10 backflips. <laughs> this is an anime for a reason. Challenge on by the end of spring <laughs> season. We'll make you do one backflip. How about that? <laughs> I was never able to do one. <laughs> so, uh, All right. Well, oh, we'll end it here for, for Shred and Sandy. So that'll be it for Baku yeah. 10. Oh, that's good. Move on to our other sports show, Birdie and Kababi. Do you guys that's... feel the fire? Dude, power of friendship will conquer all. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. It's still pretty hype. Uh, It, it was kind of slow for me this week because they didn't really introduce... Uh, like any new characters or kind of like progress the story at all. It was more of just the development of training, like teamwork. Yeah. Uh, yeah and uh, friendship and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was kind of hoping for the captain to come back with this episode, to be honest. But he's supposed to be gone for a month, though. I mean, but it seems like it hasn't been, was it maybe like the first week he's known? Is this the first couple weeks, maybe? Oh, I have no idea. Like time wise, I'm not sure how. Okay. Like, it's panning out, but yeah, because I'm guessing with with it's like a, he's still he's still training. Uh, he's 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 finally able to well one he's finally able to defend and he's actually oh he's he will hold the other person's hand <laughs> if it if if they can win because of it. So that was no, a big I, step for him. I, I think at this point he's willing to hold hands to defend. Yes. Yeah. So yep. and this is his first time where he's actually enjoying playing a sport too. Uh, yeah, it seems like it because I guess all in all, at the end of the day, he just wanted friends or I well, guess people who can keep up with him. Yeah, it's basically like teamwork where he was putting it all on him on himself, thinking basically like mm-hmm. not caring at all what the other like side says. He just thought he was like the know all. And then right. you have then you basically have like you know, uh, best ball guy just come mm-hmm. in, just uh, just come in and basically just break all that down. <laughs> he's, he's like, How did you know? I didn't say anything. He's like, Dude, I was just able to tell. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, basically, yeah. That guy's awesome. That guy is. That is. That's, he's also another just crazy positive guy. I feel like you need to have that, right? Like, if you have a sports anime without that hype guy, like, it's just not worth watching. Like the passion that he has, the yeah. ambition. <laughs> oh my god, the hot girlfriend. Apparently, like, you gotta have all that <laughs> and, and above. Can't ever forget about the hot girlfriend. Uh, Can't forget about the hot girlfriend. Yeah, and then, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I, he's he's by far my favorite character. And then their it's their friendship is definitely very interesting. You can tell like he he cares about them, but like again doesn't want to. Was it very Sundere? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like he is right. The MC, yeah, yeah, the MC. Yep. Yeah. I I feel like uh, I think uh, did you guys watch the preview? I did not. No. Okay. Never mind. We'll keep we'll keep it under wraps then. Um, okay. The 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 previews showed some stuff. So. Oh, I'm assuming they're finally going to introduce new characters, right? To yes. Team? More characters. Okay. Uh, okay. J- Justin, you're not. You're, are you not watching this? 
No, unfortunately okay. not. Yeah. Hey, Sasha's jumping in, man. A... <laughs> yeah. I know he's a, he's he's committed and given his word to coup to, yes. to continue mm-hmm. with this show. So yeah. if he does not, don't worry, he will be dealt with in, in specific <laughs> ways that we shall not mention for the safety right. of our viewers. Right. Yes. Thank you, thank yes. you. Um the, the comedy in the show though, like also the like how the characters interact, like it reminds me so much of Haiku. Mm-hmm. Uh just like like a lot of the personalities kind of mesh, they're they're somewhat the same, except the ball guy reminds me more of Hanata. <laughs> And then the ma- the main guy, uh, really the bald guy doesn't remind you of um, Ryu. you know the mostly bald Ryu? guy. Yeah, no. thank you. <laughs> no, uh, because Ryu was like he also had like a little bit of like an anger to himself. I don't think this guy has like any anger whatsoever. If anything, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I guess I guess Ryu would be kind of missing in this picture. But uh, uh, there's only like five or six characters we have. Who would the who would the MC be? Uh, Sukshima. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He would have to be Kageyama for sure, yeah, right? I would think more of a Kageyama, like Kageyama, like better Kageyama. Okay. Not, not when he was like angry Kageyama, but like <laughs> towards like season. Three. When he was but Kageyama, okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> yeah, it was it was around that point. I um, will say. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that, that was about it. I really don't have much to say because, like, I was you know, Ku was saying this is like a training episode, just kind of getting things down. Friendships were building between MC and MC and Ball Guy, and then uh, just like the the, the growth in there. Uh-huh. Um, the one thing that is kind of sticking out to me is the captain coach. What is he? Um, the vice captain? Vice captain. Thank you. Yes, the vice captain. Um, I kind of wish that like he could step in and like do some captaining. <laughs> like a lot of it is a lot of it is MC like thinking, I've got this. I know what I'm going to do. I've got a plan. Being an asshole to, you know, his partner. And then um, I'm not really not a fan of Sundo days. I don't know if you could tell. I really just don't like that. But he he's like, I know what I know what to do here. And then it fails. And they'll try it a couple of times. And then he has a new idea and it kind of works. And mm-hmm. all the while, Vice Captain is just standing there smiling, like he's so damn smart. Like he expected this outcome and like contributed towards, you know, it happening. And he really hasn't done anything. And I kind of feel like um because this is especially a sport that I'm super unfamiliar with and I would like to learn more about it. I kind of wish they would have some more scenes like what they do have in Haikyuu where they kind of like go into the captain's mind and kind of like explain some stuff just a little bit more um, than what they do. Like I think Haikyuu does it too much, especially in the later seasons, but I think a little bit of it could be like more helpful here because right now we're seeing it really from like the lens of like the MC who still is learning himself, you know? Mm. I do think the vice captain has a little bit too much of like where he's just like I'll, I'll let him figure it out himself instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, but some of there, I know that the, some of the moments that I do actually like uh, that I do like from him is when he's like he, he's he's talking to the MC, but almost like making it where he's like giving him like hints, but at the same time like he's having to like go that extra step himself or figure it mm-hmm. out or figure it out himself instead of just telling him just straight up, which is which is fine. But yeah, I do feel like he could. Be helping more to like you know kind of like speed the things up a little bit, but mm-hmm. it was yeah. just a tiny thing. Just this show is so stuff. enjoyable. Yeah, I, it's I very still, minor. I'm still really liking this show. Mm-hmm. I still don't know how to really like how the game works. Like I don't know if you guys uh, uh were able to catch on at all. Yeah, I'm than, an like, expert. Well, I got I got it more this episode. <laughs> like because because even though it was like more of like a, you know character growth or uh, or like a uh, character development, like they uh-huh. they did explain more of the sh- like the show where there is. A lot more tactics you can do to basically to to um for like either going back and forth uh-huh. um or just like how how the sports work. So I, I think I mean I I'm assuming we'll get more and more when they're actually fighting a legitimate team when it's actually a full squad instead of they're just like breaking down like the you know pieces just for training. Because mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll get more like way more of just like how everything runs um in the future episodes. Hopefully, because you, uh, you hope. <laughs> yeah, like the, the pacing does have me a little worried. Um, and with with the fact that it's a sports anime, you kind of have to spend some time to kind of develop the the aspects or the the mechanics of the game. Um, yeah. Hopefully, well, that doesn't backfire on them later on. Yeah, especially Is there a goal you... yet. What? Like a tournament or something? Is there a goal for them yet? Nothing, like a yeah, tournament no. or anything? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're still just setting up yeah. the team in a sense. Which, yeah, which is which I'm actually fine with because this is, I mean, like uh, how we mentioned before, it's a sport that I don't know if we've, any of us have heard it before. No. And so it's definitely, it's very helpful to actually get like, uh, to, to just like dive deep and just like how this, how the game works. Uh-huh. So I'm honestly fine if they take, you know, even like if they get into like a motor and going like back, like explaining even more to us, I'm perfectly fine with it. Yeah, but, for sure. I got nothing else. Yeah, that's it for me. All right. We're going to end it there for Birdie and Kababi. Um, Let's move on to our next show.
Let's talk about Vivi. Oh damn! <laughs> did anyone did anyone call the the evil twin? I guess or no. like forgot who the main couple <laughs> how was. Your, no? so, how would you ever think it was an evil twin? I don't know. Like that's what I'm saying. Like, dude, like a foresight. It, it, it came out of nowhere, bro. Like <laughs> the the reasoning as to like why she did what she did came out of left field, dude. <laughs> uh, like that opening, I thought it was maybe like oh maybe they didn't have a time frame skip, right? Like like Vivi failed, and then yeah. the the. The the doll that you see at the junkyard was 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 Vivi. That's what I was thinking. I think yeah, it, it looked like the, her. Yeah, yeah, she had blue hair. I thought. Yeah, that's a blue hair. Not. It was her. It was a twin sister that yeah. like got tossed <laughs> away like some, years ago or whatever. Some misdirection and and effective plot convenience for for the writers, then, <laughs> so to speak. The zero writer. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, apart from you know the the toke leader being the the guy that vv saved you know from those first episodes yeah. i think that was pretty clear writing on the wall at least from what i was expecting yeah just because in like the openings surprise. and everything we get glances of him and i was just like oh. okay like and he's still this, alive this makes sense um the thing that i guess i it wasn't that i wasn't expecting it but i was more so glad to see that vivi came to the realization that with kind of her current abilities and skill sets the situation she was in she wouldn't be able to get uh, the younger sister of the one girl that she couldn't save, you know, from the plane crash uh -huh. to safety. So she just, you know, kind of comes to terms with it. It's like, yo, Matsumoto, like, give me that can give me that combat like drive. And he's just like, are you sure? Basically, She's like, yeah, fuck it. Like, well, let's go. Basically the Matrix <laughs> moment. I know Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, I I'm glad to see kind of character walls being broken down there and you know hopefully we get to see that a little bit more from matsumoto's end and he doesn't end up being this very evil like underhanded character that i like to still potentially think he is <laughs> um but god damn man like that that standoff between uh vivi and uh elizabeth ooh, that was some damn good fight choreography <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, nice. the, the, were, the music too the music's so good yeah they're throwing their budgets and then the right places for sure yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say going back to Matsumoto, like I don't, I just if he's not evil or I don't know, just like it just seems like, like he just it's an AI flaw where you, you you're thinking logically, but it just sounds like, like again, there's another part where he he says like we have to kill like Estella because like she's she's on the cause of this, so obviously she's bad. But we realize well, it wasn't really her fault, even though she still has to destroy the hotel. It's like it wasn't really her fault. Yeah. So again, it's like it's it's Vivi like realizing that like. That she, she she has to constantly question Matsumoto because he's not clear about yeah. about this. But but Matsumoto well, did realize it though. Uh, yeah. It wasn't what like he basically kind of held to his guns and basically said, you know, this is what we have to do. This is like the path. Yeah, I'm just like, more saying it's he like, actually listened to Vivi's like, uh, yeah. I'm just saying this is like I mean, the second anything, time it, it happened, like, so I'm just yeah. more uh, cautious about that the next ahead, time. Too. Yeah. No. This if, the oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, like if anything, this proves that Matsumoto is actually like leaning towards as a good character because, like you yeah. said, he didn't like hold to his guns, like, oh, we have to kill him no matter what. And then if you really think about it, all the information that he's given is what was reported like from years ago, right? So going off that information, he's just assuming that this is what's going to happen at this time frame. And, you know, we just got to like do it. And with the different variances, like this happened 24 hours earlier than when it should have happened exactly so, yep. like you can't really blame the guy for like you know trying to stick to his uh yeah, original that, plan that line directly was very yeah. purposeful of matsumoto of like wait what like this is happening now like this isn't supposed to happen for that 24 hours like you said so it's like uh -huh. you know any divergence of sorts is now kind of leading towards that development of like to your point now showing matsumoto in a potentially more positive light where he's willing to tweak things to still achieve this goal I think he more but, he has to. I think if he wants to achieve the goal, I think he has to yeah. achieve those things. Because mm -hmm. he's probably doing it in a very logical sense, so that's why he was okay with doing it. There's obviously probably some yeah. parameters in his head still. That's like, okay, you know, I as a very direct kind of AI focused being from the future potentially don't want to have any divergences, but this is within the acceptable parameters. Mm -hmm. so yeah. he still you know could be like if something more drastic comes up maybe he will be more firm again yeah. like in the in the first or second episode when we see him you know ripping off Phoebe's arm when trying to go <laughs> against well, the plot or against the script so to speak yeah because right. I mean if they would have uh followed the the same thing where they had a, if they had a if they just killed Estella like everything still would have happened because they would have killed the wrong one 
Yep. Um, they would have had no idea that there was actually like a stand-in. And then yeah. the, they would have just plummeted right to Earth. <laughs> but then so this brings up the point, though. It looks like the, uh, like, whatever they call it, like the, all the actions that they've performed so far is already changing the future, right? And I think it all, right. all started with Vivi, like, showcasing, like, AIs have more than just their mission objective. They have feelings, they have dreams uh, to that to that Senate guy. And also by saving that one, uh, like, anti-terrorist group. Um, Talk. That's what that's probably what caused it to come uh, come to fruition 24 hours earlier than when the plan was supposed to be carried out. Mm-hmm. So, if anything, this is kind of just telling you that from this point on, the no matter what they do, the future is already, like, on a different course as what happened before. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So... It's, it's gonna be weird uh, or it kind of interesting yeah. how this turns out. Well, it's gonna be interesting and, to see like what changes with Matsumoto even more though, because he's gonna have to realize like you know shit's changing. So what what he sees is he's gonna have to do something about it. Mm-hmm. And ahead, to, David, I know you, you mentioned how like uh like like Vivi was showing more about how she's not just like an AI that just follows like instructions. She has those feelings, but we also saw that with Estella too. Like um, she like I think she I mean it kind of, kind of makes sense because she's like younger sister of Vivi. She was feeling really emotional towards her younger sister, Elizabeth, and I guess I mean I guess it's related to the mission, but I think it's also showing like, maybe, or maybe it's just because it's all like they're on the same family of AIs, but I think it's also showing like yeah, there's more AIs than just like their instructions. Like I think that it's starting to show like, like the more there's more and more AIs that have feelings, so maybe that's affect the future mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. I can't help but think if anything, though, and again, just with the bias of it being from, you know, the creator of ReZero, like what they're changing, even though it is changing potentially this future that Matsumoto knows of or his creators kind of, you know, have given to him. I feel like shit's just going to get even worse. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I feel like we're heading towards even more. Like, I don't know how it would get darker than what we saw in the first episode of AIs just going and killing people, but I can't help but feel like there's not going to be a, again, me being putting on my, my masochist hat. I don't think there's going to be a very happy ending well, that we're I mean, heading it, towards. It makes sense with like the changes that that's been happening with that didn't like like the the first one where it's like where they say yeah, they see the Senate guy like it made the the his law like even stronger. So maybe the outcome mm-hmm. of this one it's like maybe there's even more of a backlash against AIs than there was mm-hmm. in the original history. So yeah, I just like I, I do I feel like if anything like Matsumoto is more of there just to basically make AI stronger. Uh, we're just based off the first episode, really, because it just made the law stronger for AI. So it's, but I don't know. But then I guess we'll find out, like, what, like kind of like the the aftermath next episode. I'm guessing of what this did uh-huh. um, mm-hmm. for AI, even either you know good or bad. But yeah. uh, but she did also save that girl's sister. Positive. <laughs> that, that is positive. Positive in the, in, in, the, that, in the short term, but yes. again, now yeah. we have to think towards the long term and. I guess that even further, and I just feel like with Matsumoto, you know, all we know is what we've seen so far and what Matsumoto has said of how he came from the future. But who's to even say like Matsumoto wasn't the one that initiated the protocol that turns like all AIs true too against humans? (laughs) I mean, yeah, yeah, that'd be a plot twist, sure. Because we have no idea where he came from. But then again, it's like, yeah, why would he go back in time and then do? doing right now if, well, like, that future was what he wanted or who knows maybe he's looking for something even more messed up i mean it could be like if he has self-fulfilling <laughs> prophecy too where it's like he has to go back in time to make the conditions possible for that future if he wanted it so oh. yeah so i mean that's that's the thing of time travel so yeah it can go anywhere i'm right. still excited though I, I still have like really no idea like where their show the show is going in yeah, neither yeah. Did I, re- I re- <laughs> I really like the last two episodes with uh, with Estella in like this this space hotel. I it made me much more excited about the show than I was for the first two episodes. So yeah, I think Rip at this Estella. point we've we've definitely gotten the like plot means of the, how they're probably going to do the rest of the series is we're going to jump probably another yeah. like time skip and then now it's going to be this different event jump again time skip different event and then it's all leading towards yeah now like getting the towards the future years. yeah but um, the I will say though. Limit? Yeah, the one thing to to Ku's point at the very beginning of the, of our conversation here, like definitely a very heavy plot convenience of Toke just being able to you know go to this junkyard of you know discarded AIs and, and get you know this perfect AI to you know execute perfect this plan. plan. So yeah. hopefully they they don't lean on that more in the future, and and that'll just be a, a testament to 
the rider. So, um, but again, I, I think, you know, it seems like we're all really enjoying it. It's got everything going for it so far. So let's just hope they can uh, carry it through since we're almost, you know, admittedly at the halfway mark. That is true. Yeah. 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 So Again, the original. Show. So <laughs> we always have to worry about the, the ending. Yeah. Yeah. But even that, though, like this is like my this is probably like my most hyped show this season. You so love far. the breath of fresh air, but you fear the time constraint. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'm all again. Up, hold I'm hope. All hold hope. original. So yeah. More, Same. more power to you. That's so, all. Yeah. So that'll be it for uh, Vivi. Then let's move on to our next show. Let's talk about '86. Your favorite show, David. Yeah, David. Uh, yeah. I mean, what about '86? What brought it to the top for you? Uh, I mean, I guess honest, honestly, the second episode wasn't as strong as the first one, even though the action scene was pretty cool. Uh, I enjoy. I, I thought it was really well animated for that fight scene we had. It's just the first time I thought I saw CGI. I was like, "God damn, that's very nice CGI in an anime." It's clean, <laughs> bad, right? It's pretty clean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just more curious about more um, lore drops of like the the three types of like enemy shifts that. Or enemy machines you get to memorize. It's like, oh god, dude. There's what? no way I'm gonna remember no. any of those. Yeah, names. No I'm just like those, so. in one ear, out the other. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. a- alien robot. <laughs> um, but. I one thing I was wondering about David, maybe you picked up on it, is the like the birds that came flying in that covered the sunlight and like dropped the temperatures. Were those real birds? Were those mechanical? Those were mechanical. mechanical. They, <laughs> they were yeah. mechanical. They're like they're so were they purposely sent in then? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. I missed. I was like zoning out in the first like bit of the explanation, and then I was like, "Wait, something's off here." When I thought they were birds, so sorry. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I thought I even said like even mentioned about how like you know, like how like like when the temperature drops, basically like, it's it's cold in there for them. Mm-hmm. But then also, uh, Tizzle is saying uh, EMP. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. EMP. Yeah. Mm, I'm just, okay. So I'm just more curious about like. The one thing that really stuck out for me in this episode was when, like, when the uh, Lena, like, when she went to that classroom and she started, like, trying to say, like, the truth. It's like, I don't know, for, because, like, they, cause they mentioned how, they mentioned in this episode, like, the war started nine years ago and how, and how, like, they have, like, the, the Empire of, of a Gade, whatever, I don't prefer the name, but it's like, they have like their gold own. Or something? Mm-hmm. Their what? Like, Gold or. Gold. Uh, or, yeah. Such a G. Giad, something like that. Yeah. Something, yeah. But like they, they have their own like autonomous units. So again, you wonder if it's like their own like humans piloting that too, and then how like it's supposed to like go off in like like six years or whatever, or how many years? Two more years. Two more years. So that's that's where the two more years comes from. Which it still seems sketch. Like if the way that they treat their own units as as non-human, like I don't know how they. They can think like the empires, like units are also not humans. I wonder if I see that side, but I guess, yeah, I was thinking more about um when she was like trying to like say the two. It's like it seems really flim like for such a propaganda theme. It seems really, really rare that she's able just to do that like in a classroom and just like say it like out loud and like a hundred really, percent. Not yeah. really think about their consequences. It's like isn't this like if it was really that that much of propaganda, wouldn't you went the in- I know, like, the presser was freaking out, but he didn't seem that, like, he didn't seem like he was tearful for his life that she's saying it, it seems. Yeah. Like, well, and then her weird. friend afterwards right, yeah. was just like, you're gonna get in trouble now, like, almost kind of teasing her. And yeah, I was and like, then her so just being like, no, it's uh, all good. My uncle is, you know, the head of the military. And, and again, <laughs> it's, it's we, it's weaker things that you, you hate to see where it's like, Lena does feel kind of like this untouchable character that to be able to just waltz into the main establishment and, yeah. you know, say things how it is with literally no ramifications, it's kind of like, Really? Like, okay. Yeah, you know, you even, did such a good job in episode one of building up this, you know, propaganda. Yeah, and even, but even, even before then, it's like you're saying that it's the, the war started nine years ago, which doesn't sound like it's that long, that they had to do this emergency, like, redistricting, redistricting had built, like, the walls. It seems like such a short time period just to basically, like, just shut out, like, all the 86 people, so. I mean, we really don't know how, like, everything, like, you know, works there though. We don't really know yeah, like the way much of the lore yet. I'm just thinking like the way they explained this episode didn't really like make much sense to me or didn't, it didn't give that strong yeah, sense of like of like authority they, and propaganda that I was thinking from the first episode. Did they explain why they chose the like silver haired 
individuals? Like, did they have anything special about them? No. Or, or did they just literally no. drop? We don't like, know. Hey, yeah, say, we decided to classify all, uh, you know, silver haired or I can't remember. They just what say they, it's like, name like, is, it's like their version of like perfect evolution or whatever. So and then yeah. Like, and it's like, like, okay, you guys are rank off. one or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. so. I mean, if anything, that's that's if the information that they're teaching that we're being shown so far is the truth. It could just right. be like manipulated or, as well. Yep. Right. But you know what? I but to bring back to the point about like the the main chick just walking up in the class and saying whatever. Well, it's it's refreshing to see a character know that they have plot armor. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> like if plot armor that. was to be manifested into the show. Like, it will be this, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, that's all right. My uncle's protecting me. I don't need so, to worry well, about this Well, that was the shit. one thing I didn't really... I didn't understand where when Lena is, you know, taking that stand at the front of the class, she's looking over at the, the MP who's sitting mm -hmm. in the chair. And, like, he's there mm -hmm. for, like, certain cuts. And then on the final cut, he's not there. Was that right. more so just to show, like, oh, yeah, I can get away with this? Like, I didn't really understand what the purpose of that was. I, I think... mean, I would assume we'd see this guy later. I just thought it was, like, maybe a future no, character. Yeah, like, I don't know if he's, like, yeah. a, a quote-unquote bodyguard or, like, someone that his her uncle sent to, like, watch after her. But I don't know. It just felt kind of I kind of have more of that. like, pan to him so many times in this. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking, like, maybe, like, maybe she, she will get consequences. Maybe she, like, he's got to report it, and, like, maybe she will. She can't, like, get the protection, the plot armor. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully. Hopefully. I think that for me, I'm not totally sold on like the logic of the lore or anything yet, but we're still learning a lot of it. So I, I'm not like upset with it or anything like that. Still just kind of taking it for what it is and, and, you know, bringing in the information. But the thing that's really still keeping me attached to this show is the developing relationship between the MC. I looked up her name here. Correct. Is this how you say her name? Vlad, Vladalina? <laughs> Does that sound right to you they guys? Just call her, they call her yeah. Lena in the show. But they call her Lena. Lena. Yeah. Okay yeah um she i really like her developing relationship with the 86 crew like how they like i liked that, that they misunderstood her age and they thought that she was younger but she's actually the same age because their experience their life experiences are so drastically different um and i kind mm -hmm. of just it, 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 i i just like seeing that that developing relationship and it's really i haven't seen it happen before where you'd have somebody in her role working remotely with that group and how they have to come to understand each other. I just find it. Yeah. Interesting. So that's, what's keeping hmm. me despite the fact that some of the lore is confusing or yeah. <laughs> what I'm, who was saying about the plot armor. <laughs> I'm waiting for more, the more of the tense moments. Like, I guess we kind of saw that yeah. earlier in the first episode where like with, like with different like processors dying. So I, mm -hmm. I'm curious, like how, like what, like, I think that's where like where the show is gonna shine. It's like that tense moment where she has she has to argue with like Undertaker or whatever about like mm -hmm. what to do and having mm -hmm. these life or death situations. That's that's what I'm really waiting for. That's yeah. like I yep. I totally agree with that because for me, like with Shin, you know, Undertaker, I'm still not the biggest fan of his character. I feel like his character is so trope esque where, you know, he is kind of this, you know, elite soldier who, you know, is doing everything that you know works out at the end of the day and i'm sure we'll reach that point where you know his plans aren't always perfect and he's gonna lean more on lena um but of course you know he's also this very stoic individual that specifically when lena you know tries to be more cheerful and ask you know hey what do you guys plan to do once your you know military service is over and he's just like oh i don't know i've never thought about that and Again, it reminds me really hard of like Out of Noah Zero and all these other <laughs> like stoic, you know, yeah. super soldiers I mean, that are fair, just I very have... emotionless. And then someone comes in that's like a princess type character or a female character to show them the beauty of the world. But to be fair, at that moment, like I can't understand from his point because it opens that box where it has all the names of all the, the dead all people soldiers, who died. Yeah. So I understand yeah. like that part why he was like silent on her question. Mm -hmm. so i totally get that first character so yeah so but hopefully like you said hopefully it develops into something um i wouldn't even say better but i just want i want more and i guess we don't have that yet so yeah i'm just i think yeah. we will there's a lot of hype following the show yeah and then I'm, I'm just curious about like if we ever see the empire side like yeah i wonder if like if their units are actually autonomous or that it's actually like humans piloting to do so yeah mm -hmm. we'll see Agreed. I feel like we'll see it at some point. Yeah. Or, so. get, or get more info. So, so besides the whole like, like the whole weird thing with the plot, the 
Lena in the classroom. I, I'm still really enjoying 86. Hopefully, it can live up to my expectations. So True. Yeah, that'll be it for uh, 86. Let's move on to our next show. Uh, we got a new one, To Your Eternity. Oh, my God. God. So I really just gotta strong. say, really. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I was gonna say it's a really strong first episode. Like I was like really hooked throughout the whole episode, and I'm already like this is already one of my tops mm-hmm. just from the first episode. Yeah, right. Me too. Like, how can one episode do that? Like, literally, by the end of the first episode, I was already trying to like hop into the manga and read that. Stratton had to yell at me. I'll wait till the end of the season. But like, I literally cannot wait for more episodes to come out. It was that good of an opening episode. What was it that you said when I basically when you were making fun of uh, me for making the comment question or with the 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 thing with Crunchyroll from the first episode? Yeah. Yeah, because Stratton had told me before we watched it that people had cried in response to the first Crunchyroll episode. Crunchyroll posted like, it, yeah. And I was like, seriously? <laughs> it's just one episode, and then I freaking cried during it. <laughs> Twice, I think. Yeah. It was a pretty big emotional hit. It was, because uh, uh, at first, like, because uh, first, like, when the, was it, when the, uh, when they kind of opened up with the wolf, with the wolf dying, I thought, I could, okay, maybe this is what Crunchyroll was talking about. This wasn't so bad. And then, so then that passed. And then, then when they were, you know, just traveling into like the middle of nowhere, and then you basically see like all those gravestones up. He's like, "Oh man, somebody else was here." I'm thinking, "Oh my god, please!" I, I, I kept thinking like he doesn't know, but he actually did know. He just tried like held that positive mindset, and just then just starts bawling. I was like, "Oh god, okay, this is pretty fucking bad." And then the end of the fucking episode, I was like, "God <laughs> damn!" I was, I just, it just kept getting worse and worse. <laughs> Like, so, all right, let's be real. Did any of you guys even think he was going to survive? Yes. Like, I, you guys I, thought he was going to survive? I knew the minute that he was. Or go ahead, David. I, was, I thought the power of anime was going to save him at the end. I thought he was going to like. I thought he was going to get sick yeah. Yeah, from no. his from his cold, and then I thought he would just recover. Well, and then the story the minute, him the wolf. When we learn about him, of why he was left behind because he was you know bitten by Joan and he had to stay with all the other elders. But the minute he was even explaining this. Idealist, or idealistic kind of journey of you know this utopia across you know the frozen continent i was just thinking to myself like the pioneers back in the day i'm like there's no way you know these mobos made it across like this frozen <laughs> like tundra and you know as we get later on you know like it becomes more and more apparent of like yeah like there's there's no way and even you know the the main character is starting to come to that realization as, as positive as he can be or as positive as he wants to be for not only himself but also for you know joan his his only kind of companion left at this point oh. um you know it's it's totally in my mind like you, you knew it was gonna happen. Uh, the, like, the one, the one gripe, I, the one gripe I have, real quick, David, is like they're on the frozen tundra, and this man still falls through the ice. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Come on. I mean, anyway, sorry. Go ahead. I was <laughs> like, I, I mean, yeah, I knew he wasn't gonna make it to like the other people, but I don't know. I just had this idea that I thought, I thought he was gonna make it at the end, but yeah, that's I didn't just think me being... I didn't think he was gonna make it to other people, but I didn't think he was gonna be dead by the end of the episode. I thought. You know, I thought it was the MC. I thought it was the MC. I, honestly, I yeah. thought he was gonna die earlier. I thought after he fell into the ice and he saw his leg, and then he finally made it to like the remnants of everybody else that tried to leave before him. I thought like out there he was just gonna succumb in the snow and then, you know, be dead. Like, I didn't think we were gonna make it all the way yeah, back. Yeah, that's why he's all the way back. And... Like it's not like he went so far just to get to that point and have him track all the way back. Yeah, that was yeah, crazy. But, um, but his death made it that much more like impactful. I think. Oh at that yeah, point. Like, yeah definitely, definitely. When he's you yeah. know sitting in his chair and he's just like, oh, you know, this is my chair. Like, look, I look how cool, cool I way. am here. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, yo, man, like, just, just pass on, man. It's okay. You've done <laughs> just enough. Move on. And then it was funny, you know, because you know Joe on this being, he didn't really have any emotions at that point. He's kind of just like, oh, okay, like cool, dude. Because again, you know, he hasn't experienced what that human yeah. emotion is like, and I think if anything. That adds even more to the emotion of it when you think about it, of like when he does finally touch, you know, the dead MC and transforms into the MC, he's just hit with these waves of human emotions that he's never experienced for the first time. And now he's feeling, you know, that, you know, regret and kind of, you know, uh, yearning to achieve what this main character wanted to do to explore and see, you yeah. know, the, the greater world. So, but I, I, I can definitely was, see how it resonates with people and why yeah, they would but, get emotional. Yeah, and, and Joan even said like at the beginning, like when he first walked in that tent, he basically said it was like home, and he didn't like. like it just felt like he never wanted to leave. Like mm-hmm. he just uh, um like like right when he walked into that uh the like little hut house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So he's like kind of slow. Also, like the the voice that's narrating him, perfect. I love oh, that guy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's he's so good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah. That's, that's I'm curious really if like if the new character, the new human form. I wonder if he's if he's got to talk, if he's got to learn how to talk, or he's just gonna say like the silent like character throughout the rest. Because I could see I, going I either he's way. Gonna have to talk eventually. Because uh, when he was a dog, he was already like. In the didn't he talk once? Yeah, he did yeah, he talk did. when he was yeah. eating. Uh, but it just uh, looked yes. like the, the boy picked it up. Uh, yeah, the boy like kind oh, okay. of he was like, what? And, and it was just like, oh, whatever. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Fuck it, <laughs> so, but know? he was trying to mimic, yeah, what the boy was saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm sure he'll eventually pick it up. So Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, but if it, anything, though, like if this is a like preview of like how the story plays out with each episode, I do not want to watch the... I do not want to watch the next episode because apparently the next episode is about this little girl who is chosen to be the sacrifice. Yeah. Right? Yep. A boy dies, you know, it's, it's whatever. You know, I've been there, okay, done that. Sir. But if a little girl dies, like, no way. Okay, I'm there, I can handle it. <laughs> well, hopefully this uh, this we greater being that's now taken on, you know, the boy's image, he, he starts to intervene more now as he learns more about the world and stuff. Yeah, surely um, it doesn't mean that he's gonna like take somebody else's place each episode, right? I mean, surely it'll yeah. be. Time I would hope not. Like... I feel like that would be pretty weak. Yeah. yeah. Writing. I don't know. I, yeah. think, I, think, uh, I think it'd be interesting, just the episodic format, just exploring more of each different like tribe and places. Yeah, I think it's gonna be very. If you've ever watched uh, Kino's Journey. Or, yes, um, I was thinking the same thing. It might be a lot like or that. Or that one recent show that was about like the magic girl, Elena. Elena. Oh, yeah. It, it's yeah. very similar. Except, to except I think styles. hopefully be more likable than she was. <laughs> yeah, but, but I feel like it's going to be very similar to styles as Dave was just mentioning, where now Joan, as we're just going to, until we know what this being takes on as his new name, because we never mm-hmm. knew what the name of the, the boy was. Right. Um, it, it very well could be like, you know, this episodic focus of him experiencing, you know, these different kind of, uh, things in life and you know further doing what his mission was from the first place you know to go down to to earth and really kind of soak in as much information as possible and i think that is kind of what we're going to have in store probably yeah i don't i don't think there's going to be like some huge overarching plot i think it is going to be more an episodic focus of different Mm -hmm. elements of life in human interaction Yep. Yeah, I think it's going to be kind of meandering. And I kind of like that. I like the pacing of that, actually. Like, I like that feel. We should uh, we should also mention, too, that uh, we do the podcast on Sundays and we post this on Mondays. So uh, uh, episodes air on Mondays. So when you hear this, episode two will already be out. <laughs> oh, that is right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's there's that. I just wanted to cover that real quick. If you're wondering, mm-hmm. like, what, like, listening to this, like, what the fuck? The second episode's already out. <laughs> And then that that is the reason why. But do you guys think uh what do you think his next form is gonna be? Because at the end of the episode, uh the narrator says that for him to transform, like he needs to reach certain conditions where he needs to be stimulated enough. Mm-hmm. So do you guys think he's gonna transform anymore or is that kind of like it for his evolution? I think this is it. Yeah, I think this is it too. Because, I mean, the, the whole thing when he took over that form was basically because he wanted to travel everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have him tra- you're going to have him transform after one location. Come on. Because then it not, would also be possible. weak too towards like whoever you transfer to. Like if you were just carrying on that latest transformations ambitions, I feel like uh-huh. that would be also kind of weak and yeah. more to then you would have even more of a fragmented, like overarching plot of this being. Yeah. So um, should we just toss aside that that what I think is like important information that was tossed at the end then? Well, I think it was more of just like uh just tell, like letting us know that the you know, the guy that he transformed into like that's like that's how strong his feelings were. Mm-hmm. Um to tra- to just uh, transfer over into it. No. I mean, I could definitely yeah. see both ways happening. It's obviously way too early to tell, but mm. I mean, I hope he doesn't change again. I, I I would actually prefer him just like how Justin uh Justin and Taylor have said that just, just leave him as this kid. Well, I was <laughs> he had a huge just, impact, man. I was just thinking that like in order for him to gain to to have those strong feelings again, he's gonna have to go through a lot of different experiences in this form. So at the very uh-huh. least, for like a season of anime for like this season, I feel like he would be in that form and gaining those emotions and experiences over this arc and then like i i looked when i looked up the manga there's i can't remember how much but there's a lot of volumes like it's long running 
And so I was, I feel like he might change forms a couple of times throughout that, but I don't know that we'd see it in the anime, you know? Okay. Like, yeah. I feel like it would maybe end with something like that. Yeah. Well, I guess the other thing in the last point I'll say of why I don't think he would change forms in terms of like a much larger period of time, like you were mentioning, Taylor, with how much content is out there, is that it would then be kind of tough to explain a narrative of why would he go to different locations for each form? Because I imagine not every individual in potentially, you know, for this next girl who's going to be sacrificed, she's her probably goal is, you know, one, she obviously probably doesn't want to die as part of, you know, her tribe's <laughs> no. rituals. Um, but she probably wants to, you know, I imagine still stay with that sense of family. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like it is much more stronger for this first character that Joan has now transformed into for that as threaten mentioned their main goal is to go out and meet new people and explore the world and so like that is the perfect kind of vessel for this individual to go out and do that well even yeah for the just like kind of like how the show set it up itself up to be mm -hmm. but um yeah no i i think the the hype was was well deserved the the Damn, uh the feels. knowing the knowing feels. that the author was the same as a silent voice like it, it shows like you know yeah. he's he's not uh he's not you know dancing around anything from an emotional impact like we all saw it coming and it still wasn't <laughs> so i still wasn't ready <laughs> we all also uh love the the opening with uh utada hikaru so yeah was, ending. It was the ending or opening it well, I think it's going to be the opening but it was the oh, end. you know how okay. they do that for like first right, episode right. sometimes they'll play the opening yep. at the end so mm -hmm. yeah Yep. Um, finally, good to see her, you know, branching out further from uh, just the, every time she comes back every, you know, 10 years for Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, she did uh, Evangelion, uh, one the Evangelion movie, oh, too. True, true, that was like, the last one. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I okay. forgot about that. It was like, I think yeah. it's the first Evangelion reboot movie, so. Okay. okay. But yeah, You're great, great to have such a yeah. uh, well-renowned individual, you know, adding her, uh, her specialty to a show. I mean, like hey, this. she's been busy for mm -hmm. a kid, all right? <laughs> <laughs> truth no. so that'll be it for two year attorney and yeah episode 2 is coming out next day so we're already be behind yeah, but yeah. It's, it's fine <laughs> yep. today yep. yeah. alright so and there uh, move on to our next show let's talk about Tokyo Revengers oh, okay so I, a lot of the hype for me died this episode really? uh, I, nah. I yeah. want to know why though like I'm kind of curious as to why well okay so uh, some of my uh, uh, thoughts on it was one you know he he was able to change uh her brother's uh timeline just by basically telling him like on this day you and your brother like you and your sister are gonna die there was kind of like that friendship thing and then i thought like i was like well why you know why couldn't he just tell her like you know you and your brother will die on this day and then uh the whole thing was your back uh, the, the back thing would be would be coming is like well how do i know like how, like how do i know like you're telling the truth or how do i know that this is going to be real when her brother was able to kind of pick up on the same stuff, like was able to trust him. I know there was like a little bit of friendship bond, but at the same time, they are dating. So you would think that there would be some sort of bond there. Mm. So I just feel like that could be kind of an easy kind of thing um, to kind of just go over. I also just, um, so that's my thought. I don't know if you guys want to comment on that. I kind of, I, I have a couple more points, but I can't understand that. I feel like <laughs> my, my thing too is like, it's how, they keep saying how like like it's because of this gang that she dies. It's just I don't know. I I still don't understand. Like I guess like I guess I, I guess I'll, I'll explain there how she's involved. But it just to me it's like yeah. Why don't you just like go if you're not tell not tell she's not gonna die. At least maybe like tell her to like not be involved at all in this gang or like I don't know. I I can see what where you're coming from. Strand. I mean, like if anything, yeah. you kind of have to think about it with uh, Steins Gate and Mayuri. Not a good recommendation. Uh, I guess. <laughs> not no. a recommendation. Not not a it's, good it's, connection it's, for me. I, I, I do agree it is kind of the one of the weaker things that does come to play with time travel. And you have mm. to think of like an avenue of how you explain that they can't escape from this situation. Um and I know that was admittedly one of the gripes with, you know, Steins Gate and its usage of time travel, but I, I can see kind of again how they're kind of pulling from that. And um I, I think if yeah. anything, it, for this show it, it, this show for me and for you know reading the source material to where it is so far and, and not going many into spoilers it, it's much more about the characters and cast that you're going to get involved with and the time travel is just a means to do so it's not you know the main focus it's not that hey cool time travel science like all this <laughs> stuff it's just like hey it's kind of to your points right and like they just really gloss over of like 
you know, uh, Takamichi talks to Naoto, the younger brother, once, and that, you know, spurs him to become a police officer and, yeah. you know, be the vessel for time travel. And I think that's fine. I think the author even admits kind of at the point that, yeah, it, it's it's a weaker logic, but oh, the bigger okay. focus is for this gang and for this ensemble of characters that you're going to really get to know probably in like the fourth or fifth episode. Okay. Yeah, because like, because the whole the whole thing is like, because he brought that up, so it's not like it, I was just kind of like pulling it out of like out of like nowhere. I was just like, okay, well, mm-hmm. if you're gonna use that logic, you could easily, you know, kind of like just you know counter with basically like the, the no, logic. No, to- like, totally fair. fair. There's, and immediately yeah. that was a, the fear that I had. Yeah. There's like there's a <laughs> with, second with new watch. There's like there's uh, I had a gripe. I think Stren's gonna mention it though, so we'll see if you mention it, Stren. Uh, there's another gripe. Well, I mean, this one was I don't know if it was like a real oh, a minor thing, like. It's already two episodes, and I'm like tired of like having to basically just watch this guy recap. just get beat down. Like the recap, oh. I hate. Oh. I hate the recap. I really, I really didn't like also... that they recapped at the beginning. Yeah, it's like yeah. hey, it's the second episode. Uh, yeah, I, I made a comment. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, I made a comment on that as well. And then also, I was just like tired, like because of both episodes, we just see this guy just get beat down. Well, I mean, he's just he's, kinda... he's not the strongest thirteen year old, so I can understand. Yeah. He's like, I know, you know, very, very he's very Shinji esque. Of Evangelion, yeah. where he is a very like weak and you know kind of conflict adverse individual but, from from the get go. That, that didn't really bother me. There's is what's the third Christ trend? I, I think this is I'm trying to see if you um if you share David's David's fishing over here. He's like, oh, no, I'm I, it's, I it's believe... same. I I don't really like remember the ones like on the t- like okay. off the top of my head. I'll um, okay. I'll, I'll just say mine then. Like the when like when uh, now I told just said right away like like. How you can time travel to, like exactly to this day? I'm just like thinking, like twelve years exactly to this day. I'm like, wait, how do you know like all this? Like oh, you yeah. know, yeah. like <laughs> exactly twelve years, and it can only be that day. Like out of like the one time it happened, and you know it's from a handshake. Yep. It's yeah, like that's the exact same thing. Damn it, I forgot all about it. That that's what else. That's what else. I thought you were griping with. That's like that's that's oh. it's, a, it's something. It's very specific, <laughs> but they did it like once. Yeah. So it's like, wait, how do you know all this? Like. Yeah. So that's like that's like my main thing. It's like is that again part. it's it's something that I, I totally understand from a a new viewer aspect. And I think it's something that hopefully as we get more characters in, in their backstory with this gang, um, you can be a, a little more uh I guess lax on yeah. the weakness of, of the so the time travel. Besides device. that part, like I I do enjoy the show. Like I really Enjoy the plot and like I really enjoy the relationship between like like Hina and Takemichi. So like rooting for her, their their yeah. relationship. The villains also look like they're in their mid twenties and yet they're in middle school. Oh, that's not that too. Like all the delinquents, <laughs> so, like they're supposed to be like like that, third year middle school. Do they look like yeah, yeah. way older? Hey, but, I, but I, I don't know. Like in the JoJo series, they're all high schoolers and those dudes look like you know yeah. year old grown up. They're ass high men. schoolers in JoJo. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, oh yeah. my gosh! Like so, I was about to say, like, point, dude, delinquents are always <laughs> aged up by like yeah. fifteen yeah. years. Or like yeah, I just not like, I don't actually hold high schoolers. Yeah, like, like yeah. I don't hold the anime against because like they, yeah, they do that, that all the time. And yeah, that part anime, I was so. I, I can I yeah. can spend my disbelief because that's anime. So. Yeah, I laughed a little bit when you were. Right, 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 let's, let's be real, right? Like in real life dramas and whatnot, like those high schoolers in those shows, they do not look like high schoolers. Well, those are as well. Okay? Those are actors. <laughs> so, so to be not, fair, so they have less of a leeway to work yeah. with. But I mean, no, I I'm say... just saying this it doesn't yeah, matter. I, I'm not hitting the show on that though. No, no, that that part doesn't bother me. Yeah. Okay. So. But no, so there's, there's a couple of ones where I'm like that, like okay, like the first episode I was like I'm in, the second episode I mean I'm still in, but man, there's a lot of flaws that were kind of uh, it's a, shown. It's a slow burn for sure, and to give insight, so the two episodes that we've seen so far, they pretty much one for one match the panels of the manga, um, and the manga right now is at its 204th chapter oh that they just released this week. God. So <laughs> is this a weekly or a monthly it, manga? It is, I believe it's weekly. Okay. It's gotta be weekly if it's I'll, like I'll 200. Oh, yeah, yeah, 200, sure 200, 200 monthly is a lot, so it should be yeah. Weekly, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, weekly, because it started 2017, so yeah, definitely weekly. Um, okay. And if, if if they continue at the pace that they're going, then this is one of those shows that could be, you know, one of the contenders for, for long-running shonens that we haven't seen, you know, uh, quite so often Ooh. in the, the animes of today. But um, that was actually we... something that I was trying to think of, how many episodes we have, because... I haven't seen a confirmed episode count yet for this yeah, show. Not um, yet, no. I'm assuming it's going to be 24 just because uh, Sasha, you know, actually after he had watched both these episodes, he was asking me like, hey, how much material is there? 
And so that's what spurred me, you know, to kind of double check. And if it does match up the one to one chapter per episode, then chapter 24 would be like the perfect kind of a finale or cliffhanger for a season one. So oh I'm leaning more yeah. towards it's probably going to be a 24 episode season. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I mean, but this is a shot. I'm not going to drop. I'm going to stick with yeah, it just because I mean, there's it, a lot of hype. It could definitely use 24 because, like, yeah. Like, yeah, besides all like the stuff we've said, I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious, uh, especially this episode, like, the, the, the last scene with, like, the challenge against the boss. Like, I swear I to God, know. if we watch, if we have to watch him getting beat down again at the beginning of the next episode, I, I don't know. I may, I may have to I'm take curious that if, if he's got, like, if he's, yeah, if he's got, like, Ooh. fight dirty or something because I don't see it any well any, Dude, any other way. You would. I kept thinking, like, okay, this guy might have, like, a little bit more experience just because he is, like, technically, what, 20-something years old? He has, like, experience. Yeah, he has experience of basically, like, of all that stuff. So I thought maybe he'd have a little bit more experience instead of getting beat to shit, like, every single time (laughs) so far. I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean, you have to remember, he did say at the point where he's just getting the shit beat out of him, he was, like, at that point, that's when he decided to kind of ditch all his friends and everything. So he never did anything after that to improve his fighting skills, even with being older. You yeah. know, that doesn't add anything to it just because you have life experiences. It's not always going to teach you to be a best fighter. Yeah. Yeah. That's a another, fighter. Like, yeah. <laughs> another, I guess, like just a small kind of like crap about the show is like a lot of these times, like in these, like where it feels like they're like significant events that he doesn't remember these events until after the fact, like until after he gets beat up or stuff. Except one time where with his friend, he's like, oh man, this is when he like almost dies. I was like, why like how come like you remember this part now all of a sudden and not things that actually happen to yourself unless he suppressed himself so hard that he doesn't remember anything probably he had a rough middle school yeah which is yeah, which is man. it's I mean, it's becoming more understandable yeah. it definitely seems like after that point he really just coasted through the entire rest of his life up into yeah. adulthood and even like he said you know time and time again he's like i have a manager that's younger than me everybody you know looks down on me mm-hmm. so it's like he never mm-hmm. really did mature yeah, in, in but, that sense, he just let society take him whatever direction, and he yeah. ended up in a life where he was obviously not happy whatsoever. And then now it's like, okay, we have this way to to make things different, and so right. now it's his evolution of like doing that. Yeah, but I just feel like that would make these events more significant then, because then they were like the last, if, like they were like the last Definitely. events that actually had an impact. But he just doesn't remember it. But then again, it could always be where he just gets um, well. The the first one was should have been like an exception because he did just get tossed aside, like tossed into everything, just not knowing anything that's happening right now. He thinking it's a dream, mm-hmm. but uh, I thought like maybe with like before kind of he got just you know beat to shit that something else would have happened. But yeah, I'm um, I'm hoping that that doesn't happen next episode. Oh, I, was, I, was, positive I, I remember too. It's like it's so when he was asking like for the leader, the, the names of the leader, like random music like that like. That was I'm dumb. just like, really? <laughs> like, that's how you're like infiltrate like this gang? I mean, yep. I don't know. Yeah, to be fair, that was on him. <laughs> so, like, and uh, and I guess, like, he, again, he didn't really know what was going to happen, even though I think everybody would have expected that. He the... would think that, like, all that time he spent with Naruto, like, 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 trying like, to go over planning and all this info, you'd think he have a better way to, to just more discreetly <laughs> to find well, out. I don't know. You, you think there would have been a little bit more of a plan, too, before he just shook his hand? Uh, you think that because he is a he is a police officer, so you think he would know a little bit more uh, of just like of how to maybe like set things up or give him some sort of because uh, he has been. Like, it sounds like he's basically been you know looking into this like his entire life, um, and until like up to that day like where they ended up shaking hands again. So I, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more of a yeah. of a, like an idea or a plan. But well, to be fair, know. there there will be more background into into that. So nice. It, it, it's one of those things where. It's a tough sell because it's a show that really shines in the long run. Okay. Yeah. For me, right. like, and I'm I'm really invested. I guess, yeah, I'm just really invested in the relationship between Takemichi and Hina. So I want that end goal. So I guess that's like that's mm-hmm. really what's keeping me keeping me on yeah. the show. Like so, keep me hooked. It's like, something I, that that's really tough that's just like, hey, keep watching, like have some faith in me here. Like it, it'll all work out. <laughs> No, I, I know, it, yeah. no, no. It I'm, is I'm admittedly gonna... knowing how many episodes or how many chapters there are. It's going to be a slower burn. So that's yeah. the thing to kind of take with a, a grain of salt. Right. Like we're not going to yeah. leaps and bounds, you know, <laughs> right. get into to different things. Like it's yeah. Also, if if the anime skips over some stuff, just let us know. Like yeah. if, if it basically you know, like, as, it... as soon as we hit that point, if we do. Sounds good. Yeah, but, yeah I'm gonna hold hope, and I know, like, believing it's gonna get good. All I gotta say yeah. is next week's episode. Woof. 
We're gonna have a lot to talk about, boys. Lots to talk yes, about. Yes, this man I, got beat down I again. Just... Laid there for ten minutes. <laughs> I was saying, yeah, he's gonna get beat up again. But just, just, best, just what, uh, just, just what Strang wanted. Yes, best MC ever, guys. Just, yeah. just wait. We got Yamcha. Yes, <laughs> God. Uh, oh, nah, God. Nah, nah. <laughs> We're, we're, right. we're a little bit better than that, don't worry. Yes, yes. All right. We're right at there for Tokyo Revengers. And we'll move on to our next show. All right. Let's talk about My Hero Academia. Woo-woo. All right. Yeah. Brian, welcome. Would you like to start us off? Uh, uh, to, to what David uh, always says, uh, not a lot happened this episode. So. <laughs> mm, yes, yes. Mitch, Shinzo, like his ability is, is, uh, it, it just becomes like, like, a. well, actually, no, I, I should have brought this up to you, David, because there's a lot of like team fighting, a lot of, uh, team yeah, fighting strats. Yeah, there was actually a lot of team fighting that happened during this episode. So, but I'm, it's done well. I'm, I'm, I'm glad at that. Yeah. I gotta no, say, I'm not very, like, impressed with, uh, Shinzo, to be honest. Taylor, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was expecting more of a reaction from you. <laughs> Like the slow pan, like it basically is just like something insanely shocking. I, can, was just I can see the internal, you know, look on Taylor's face of like, you shut your damn mouth, too. <laughs> like, don't make me come over there. Let's be fair. Sure. He got saved. He got carried, all right? Shinzo was awesome What exactly support. did not live up to your expectations, Ku? Is it the fact that he already <laughs> admitted that he was way behind and he was in class C and didn't have the opportunities to have the same experience as everybody else? Because he did I'll acknowledge that more. to begin with. <laughs> Regardless, I was expecting more. I thought maybe he was being modest, you know. I was like, "Hey guys, you know, I'm not that strong. So don't mind no, me." No, he's, a, he's then, an honest, upstanding person. <laughs> you get uh-huh. what you see uh, is what you right. get. <laughs> when you've been secretly training with like Eraserhead, you know, I'm expecting some some epic shit to happen, you know. But okay. uh, yeah, he grabbed I'm, he grabbed a pipe and it broke and put it on that dude's head. That's that's pretty impressive, dude. Yeah, I mean, he's basically sure. taking communications away from them too, just because knowing that he could be copying their voice, like they like they like. It didn't, nobody knows what to do, and even like when their own team is talking to him, they don't, they can't respond or trust anything because they don't know if he, like, he's the one that's saying it. I mean, uh, even that, right? With with the with the highlight of them in the in the opening, and then with him, I mean, we still haven't seen how he's going to fare against Class A, so I'm sure that with the experience that he has with this fight, it's going to carry over, and he's going to actually do more to stand out, but. I don't know. I, I guess I was just expecting more from from the character. In a you sense. more to stand out. You have Frappy, who has a long tongue and can like and and has some poisonous stuff. You've got a guy who has a laser coming out of his belly button. You've got <laughs> like you, you, these are people. You got like, Mr. Mr. Grapehead. And they don't stand out at all. Oh God! <laughs> you have Uraraka, who can be useful, but like, just I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of like abilities here that you kind of have to figure out how to make them yeah. useful, depending on the battle. Yeah. Whereas, like, I feel like Shinsouls is a lot more like ubiquitous across all battles. Like, you could use it in a lot of different situations. So I feel That's like true. that makes them strong. Yeah, yeah, but like the, a lot of people's other like niche kind of abilities, it's more like the emphasis on like the team, like the like the team fighting then. Where like they have like they're like they have to they're only more effective I guess like in the the the, the correct team. Mm-hmm. It's because uh, you know if you just throw out, like if you throw out just like Shinzo or like the or um God, who else was just like a really kind of generic character I'm trying to think of um or uh, you know like, obviously like, like Minato like, is like the easy one to go to. We have the, thinking, the, in, like the invisible, rush. the invisible girl too. Oh yeah, that's true. Like, <laughs> her too. Oh, they get me started on how useless she is. All right, Just, you, you really think invisible girls useless? I mean, you got a girl that's literally naked. I mean, you know, she's there for boots. like espionage and sneaking, and get which that, is good. She's. I, I feel like she's also kind of there in a weird sense for like some weird like fan service type thing. <laughs> yeah, I feel like she's definitely like a comedic effect. I think that's him. it. That, that's basically like, right? It's just like, oh, of course, it's probably. And then, I, you know, for the reader, it's like, oh, he's probably kind of cute. Because <laughs> <laughs> you never, you know, we never know what she looks like. So uh. I was I was thinking about this during the episode. I was actually thinking about the fact that I kind of like the fact that every like I feel like nobody's abilities really make them like so much better than everybody else. Like you've got like Bakugo, Kishima uh deku and you know that like that group they've got like the really flashy like power 
but that's not always what you need like for mm-hmm. for many missions and i feel like really they like this this emphasis on teamwork is really necessary and i think it's just um i, I personally like it a lot more than like the what, what do you guys call them like the power fantasy type of people who are just super like the top two people that are powered like the two oh, people the, that are like on the top creep. that basically just challenge each other and ever like mm-hmm. nobody else yeah, can even power compare, yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I like the fact that they're a little bit all more balanced. Yeah. I mean, I would prefer you, this too. You move away from the the holy trinity of Deku, Bakugo, oh, and, and Todoroki, Todoroki, which is the next movie, by exactly. the way. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> well, that's what. Yeah, all the movies seem to you know always come back to that holy trinity of like, okay, cool. Yeah. We'll show everybody else. That's They'll exact, have their little moments I mean, of like, exactly hey, I'm here. I'm here. I can do stuff. That's what yeah, I mentioned earlier. Day. Yeah, I, I want to go outside that trinity. Well, I feel like that's also tough with a lot of shonens where it's like, you know, they're admittedly the most popular characters because one, they're they're overpowered at the end of the day. And again, you're always going to write towards the characters that the fan base resonates with. I personally feel like like it's the easy thing for these writers mm-hmm. to do. Yeah, I do so. think it's kind of a shame, though, that he has thrown in so many like characters that could be interesting because, you know, everybody's talking Definitely. right now about how Jujutsu Kaisen has all these strong female characters and that like exist for their own goals and have their own ambitions. They're not tied to the male characters at all, blah, 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 blah. And that's super true. And I feel like Hero Academy is like so set up to be able to do that exact same thing. Like they've got a group of female characters that have interesting abilities. There's like they started to give Uraraka a background and then they were like, never mind. In fact there's like there's yeah. like way less female characters in the class than the male characters though. There is. Like, there is. Like, yeah. like, it's like it's only female so. in that class. But but there is enough for like Haley said for them to stand out and be their own, right? Yeah. Uh, well, and it is the thing too where I think they've tried to have like the actual adult hero world for the female characters try to shine. You know, last season I think we got to see more I mean, of that. Like I know Mount Lady is a complete meme of a character, so we won't include her. <laughs> um but I feel like um I love Mount Lady. Oof. The the dragon, the dragon character lady, yeah. lady is has a little bit more empowerment to her and then midnight is, then have, is a great a great character but they're not interesting you, you know yeah, we don't yeah. know their motivations we, or any they they're, they're just strong like they're yeah, not the other one we don't really. know much yet is the one uh bunny the waifu bunny girl <laughs> yeah yeah exactly well, well, i'm was, making that point I, <laughs> so. I was gonna say going back to taylor's point it just feels like still like in my hero it just feels it's still like a uh, deku's story just it's like everything's just revolving yeah. on him. It seems like everyone else just wants to be hero because, just because. It is Deku's story. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, literally yeah, Deku's story. Yeah, it's, so, so, like, so that point of all trying to make like, the, the female character shine, it's like, just feels like it's just Deku's story. So where were they shine? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think it's fine. I think it'd be fine if it was just Deku's story, but like they have gone out of their way to introduce so many other characters. Mm-hmm. Can you yeah. really call it Deku's story? Like. A lot of times, I forget well, um, Deku exists. Yeah, like the, the pillar or the foundation is Deku's story, but I agree to your yeah. point. The, the series that really shine are those that can build off that foundation so that they can also stand alone on their own. And that, like, yes, everything is probably going to head back towards that main foundation at the end of the day because that's what all shonens do, mm-hmm. you know, of this one in main character's yeah. main story. But I, I totally I was, agree. Like, you know, series I like guess. One Piece and other shows, like, they truly make their side characters shine. I guess I was looking at overall. Yeah, I guess I didn't think too much about um, everything that's happened so far. Well, mm-hmm. in the the first episode of Hero Academia, I mean, you have Deku like narrating and says like, "This is my story of how he became the greatest hero." And so. It's not even the first episode of this entire. It's literally like every the opening of every episode. episode. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess <laughs> this kid just goes guess, off uh, and, like monologues about this is how yeah. how I <laughs> became the best hero in the literal <laughs> world. So it's rather like, than, than analyzing the entire series, <laughs> getting back towards the focus of this season, how do you guys feel about, you know, this season potentially being a season that is purely going to be centered around team fights for a majority well, that's of what the I want. episodes? Yeah, that's, yeah. No. that's what I've been wanting for a while. I, I would prefer that. Yeah, I, I outside, prefer the that whole, like, outside the Trinity, like we keep saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's also taking a break out of uh, like, just kind of showing us like where all the characters are, like what, what they all learned, what they all trained. So then, then they can move on to the next, like uh, the the um, was it the League of Villains arc? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're right. just kind of catching us up with everybody, plus introducing a new uh, main character into the the roster with Shinzo. Like, like again, like I just, I just don't really care much about the school stuff. Like, I just want to go with League of Villains just because that's the only like big thing that can happen. But it sucks though. It's like it's so underwhelming at this point. 
So, but so we, you want like a time skip. Up, so. You want a time skip in a sense. <laughs> I mean, like, I know, I know, like, they're trying to, to flush out everyone's powers with this, with this class A versus class B, but I don't know. Like, I guess we'll see if it pays like, off. I just want more, yeah. more, more story to follow. I mean, I'm all for developing each character and supporting cast and give them their own background story. And you know, if you like someone, then yeah, you know, it's cool and all. But when you're when you're restricted to this and you're not really like a long running anime, like say like Bleach or Naruto or whatever, it, it's kind of hard to uh, to like this format because you know you're just like, oh shit, you only got 20 episodes left. Like, like how are you gonna solve this? What do I have to wait for? Like, how's it gonna play out? Well, I mean, that to be fair though, like season five seasons is a lot of of uh, of episodes, so I like I can right. Long but then the now. pacing that it's currently going in, I don't think it really even with like five seasons, I feel like that's holding it back. Well, the thing is, you can cover like multiple people's backstories briefly, like of what the training they've done. Right. Like really all we needed for like for uh, for Shinzo was basically like we, we already kind of told like knew just with his wrappings. It's uh-huh. a little brief history, just like how like his training he's been doing with Aizawa, and then just move on to the next thing. But uh-huh. then, uh, but if they do like do an episode uh, or like one battle every episode, then it's gonna be like a you know it's, it's gonna be rough, rough, right? Yeah, because like, there's be really there's, there's ten different teams. So yeah. are you gonna do this for but, ten different teams? Or? But at the same time, though, here at Academia, I'm not really worried about time constraints because it seems like this show will be animated. <laughs> like I I feel like you don't just yeah, animate no, a show for five uh, I, seasons. I like it's it, all I, good. No, I agree with Kubo about the pacing. It's just like. Like that's why I say like I just I'm like I I don't care about the school stuff so I just want to get yeah. this over with. Yeah, by school stuff, do you mean like the battles that they're doing? Like, yeah, or the like, training like, or like, the right, right, right now, like the the battle between class A and class B, it just like it just doesn't excite me about my academia. So yeah, besides the I mean, school festival, but yeah, school I mean, festival is lame. I mean, I mean, uh, the tournament, <laughs> the train, the tr- tournament. Thing, whatever that one season that was exciting oh, but yeah. oh god like you here, mean, how did you like, feel about like the the license arc from previous seasons was that you, you know they were, they were getting their heroes license no that's when they yeah, were fighting right. against like gang orca and then the other oh, right. schools were competing in the well i honestly like i'm fine with them that, taking that, that like no that i like that part because that was yeah. well i guess that's about... different because you're getting more characters from these different it was schools. it was explaining more about the and hero it helps society progress the story too right yeah it was yeah. explaining more about the lore about the hero society and how like actual like adult heroes like work and how they function so i like seeing that but point so, of view i guess like in this instance if it just focuses on the students of um the hero academy and you know it's focusing on their power developments like is that still something you find value in or are you saying that like if it just is focusing on the hero academy like consistently then you're you're it's not like, as like hyped for this that. specific for- format i feel like we've, we've seen it before already of like everyone like using their powers so i just it doesn't feel yeah. like it's anything new it just feels like we just keep going back to it feels like almost filler like we we, are, we already know like their powers and i guess maybe not not the team fighting part but it's like i'm just i'm more angst i like i want some more more like more a story to follow basically Wait, what, what was the time oh, skip um before like the, the uh, like from like the last thing like because I, I know like they've been like training and uh up to this point so I, and I, and it, it sounds like just about every single one of them probably have some sort of like new ability or or some sort of ability we haven't seen yet well i mean they're still uh, first years aren't they so, yeah i don't like, think yeah. the time skip yeah, was, was that time big skip. yeah i don't yeah. even okay. think there there might not like, have even been one it might have just been very minor it's just yeah. winter now in a sense seasons have changed so okay. they have new outfits in a sense but oh yeah. right right yeah. yeah i know that they've they've uh kind of uh, skipped time like you know here and there like when they're like, when when Deku was learning his like his air flicking stuff uh-huh. and then you had like uh when they were going through like all that training and then he also when Deku was learning his kicks as well because uh-huh. mm-hmm. they've had like all those parts as um but but then again like all we've really seen is, is of deku and uh the, the the normal characters right yeah and then and then, i know and then, and then like all in all though i think we might just be over analyzing it like the reason why this particular team fight took two episodes is because it did have uh shinzo into it so you kind of have to like highlight his fights to see how he's progressed and since he's going to be what well, seems to be like a, a key character for uh, the future plot. I guess that's why it's being fleshed out the way it is. Yeah, so. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna judge this season just by like these first couple episodes. So I'll just keep waiting. Like, yeah, normally I'll just like just watch it, just not think much. Like, I don't. 
I'll just just continue watching till the end. So I'll wait till like later to. Like, I mean, it, it doesn't really bother me as much as I think. Like as it sounds, it's not like I'm saying it. it's just like it's. Just, I'm just getting this, waiting to get this over with. So I don't have much. I think, I think a hard. lot of it is like pacing stuff. Like I just feel like Hero Academy is always, especially the anime, has always had just like some pacing issues like just yeah. at the point that you kind of like get into some interesting like david i know you love lore drops and stuff like that like just as you get some information then it like backs off and we'll we'll have these types of team fight tactics type of things yeah. right and it's like i i like those a lot but i just feel like there's like a time and a place to to, to develop it and i when you're like reading the manga, you can kind of like skip through or you can get to what you want to get to. You can go through it yeah. at the pace that you want, yeah. but we're really constrained by the anime format right here. And I think that's yeah. a large part of the problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, previous so. seasons have, uh, um, previous seasons, I know that they've skipped some of the fights, but this one, it seems like, um, they're kind of going through every single fight. I mean, even like with the cover art of this season, you would, you would assume that this season is that this is the, this is what it's going to be. But, yeah, but yeah. I mean, overall, it's like, uh, it, I'm just my overall thoughts just, eh, I'll just wait till like I yeah. get better. So I'm not yeah. too worried. I'm still interested. But, I mean, I'm not hitting it. <laughs> I think to their yeah. credit, their their best thing to do would be to, you know, mix in different kind of focuses. Because I, I agree, if you know, if we're just going to go back to back to back to back, like fights in this tournament, then yeah, I could definitely see yeah. it. Get I think like yeah. if, if we see grueling and, and you know slow for viewers, especially for a first time view. And to Taylor's point, you know, you don't have the benefit of a manga where you can just be like, all right, you know, flip mm -hmm. on through, especially if you're not caught up to the current latest mm -hmm. chapter. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, I, so so I think for next week, like I'm probably just not gonna say much. I don't think I'm gonna have much yeah. ad for next week. And, if, and again it's a shonen and to Sredden's point they're probably going to animate everything they've done five seasons already there's no reason why they're not just going to continue it so shonen's progress slowly it's just yeah. the nature of the beast yeah but like, like how you guys mentioned like just kind of throwing us the of what the villains plans are even or what or what they're doing during this i think would be would be more just at least kind of show us like what else is going on besides this yeah i mean hopefully we get to see more of our well never mind okay yeah, never mind. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to see what happens with uh, with Hawks, right? Like what he's doing as of right now as well, because they kind of opened up the the season with that. Totally forgot about so, him until Kuma mentioned yeah, it just Yeah, now. right. Like, like you got this guy who's supposedly the, the second most popular hero, uh, but he's he think he's like a double agent, but it's really because you know, like the corporation that kind of like controls him in a sense. Uh, they're telling him to go do it, so it's not because of like. Uh, uh, because of what he wants to do either. And then, like, it cuts down to, like, Deku's story. Like, oh, okay. Uh, you're going to have a dream about the the originator of um, One for All. And then, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yep. it's... kind of wish they would do things like that, where, okay, you want to have, like, a team battle to flesh out the, like, the, the school or the kids, but then, you know, try to throw in some things from, like, uh, like Hawks and the other, like to to progress the story in a sense. Right, definitely. But, yeah. Brian, Brian, any uh, kind of closing thoughts on what's up? Um, uh, no, no. <laughs> okay. Everything was pretty much talked about. So. <laughs> okay. I think I'm gonna be Brian like, next week too. So it's it's yeah, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a long season for for people that just. I don't think Why, I don't like, think this part's gonna last too long. Yeah, because but... because uh -huh. like historically, I think out of all the seasons, the villain arcs have done some of the best. Sort of minus sort of um, what's his face overall overhaul. But he's not like legal villain though, so yeah, he wasn't. I mean, he's still a villain. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's still a villain, villain. But yeah, like for people that just like really enjoy the the villain arcs like this arc's gonna be a long fucking season for them because they ain't true. getting <laughs> shit yeah. So, yeah. yeah yeah it's just gonna be a long like oh, is this scheduled for 24 episodes yeah yeah uh, they usually are yeah. the usual yeah. is yeah it's probably gonna be a long 24 episodes yeah. like maybe you might get 25 like, four four episodes maybe five that like have to do with anything with like hawks endeavor and like the league of villains but other than that just yeah i would enjoy if enjoy anything... the the fruits of their training <laughs> pretty much yeah enjoy the the animation of the fights and everything because yeah, to brian's point with it being 24 and 
not spoiling or 25 i could very well see we're probably going to get a mix of things till like episode 12 and then when we have the the halfway mark that's when it's going to be more of a hard shift potentially and that's not going into spoilers or anything but just if i had to go off what we've seen in previous seasons it always kind of seems to fit that format of like yep all right we have the first 12 then all right cut and then now we either have like a one filler and then on to the next big thing right yeah but uh you, hopefully they, they, though, they or go ahead can you imagine though they do like they do that and then the next arc is like a weak villain arc like the gentle criminal again i, <laughs> I mean it happens man and it's one of those things that oh god um you know i can gladly say that shouldn't happen in this case but there are definitely <laughs> shows yeah that i can look back on and be like Man, if I didn't read the manga or I didn't know this, and then I was literally sitting there and had to, you know, build up for this hype, and then it all just fell flat. Like, I can think of that specifically actually with like Bleach. When Bleach first aired, and they had this arc called the Bount arc, which is about like these vampire users. I thought that was a real arc, and then I learned after the fact that shit was all filler. <laughs> Dude, that was exactly for me too. Because I was like, um, what the what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that was same for me. I because I I was um I was was it just a binging uh, bleach at that point, and I I didn't even really like know what filler was, and then I, until I found out like later that it did, that actually didn't happen. Yeah, I mean it's like the same thing with Naruto. Imagine watching Naruto the first time, and then you hit that heavy filler. Well, at least Naruto's a little more blatant about their filler, <laughs> but it's just like, oh man, like it's rough. Yeah. It happens. Like, bleach to the best tried to make it a canon. Yeah, that's yeah. the one time when I don't know. If there's yeah, right. switching to the <laughs> manga and there's a lot of content. That's the only time it works out. Yeah, so we're uh, we're yeah. uh, leave it there for filler. So that's it for <laughs> my hero academia this week. We sound we sound really negative, but we're still it's it's a shonen, so we'll get there eventually. We'll we'll get the hype going. I was always so, I will always hold hope for hero. Yeah. So that's it for our main shows. We've been over like wait like two an hour and forty minutes, whatever. So yeah. where it wants to Wait, say shout down. outs for this last part, go for it. Uh quickly I did watch uh two episodes of Eden Zero, or the I don't know if there's any more than that. Um teared up in the first episode, the like kind of like little backstory of or like or how he gets or his like the MC story of like how he actually gets off of the planet was uh was a pretty it was a pretty big tearjerker. Um, a lot of just you know unnecessary etchiness, but it's fairy tale, so it's expected. So uh, going into it, I'm assuming there's gonna be a lot more of that, where it's just it's just poorly done. Oh yeah, uh, but, but it's fine. We'll, we'll see. I never watched fairy tale, so this is like a whole new show for me. Mm. That's and then that's all I got. I, I don't know if I'm the only one watching Eden Zero. Uh, yeah, I watching think Eden Zero. I am. Fuck. Yep, it's just me. Okay, we'll move on. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um. I'll give a shout out to uh, the Saints power is omnipotent. It added another pretty good episode this week, I'd say. Um, it's a very comfy show, and sure. uh, I'm very much enjoying the uh, the cuteness of the the main character <laughs> and her interactions with these these other characters that we're getting introduced to. And you know, very well animated. I think you know the the music and soundtrack has been pretty solid. Um, so yeah, I've I've been enjoying it. It's it's okay, different. Like- cuteness of the green-haired guy he's super adorable <laughs> it's, right. it's also very different in seeing like a like a main character that's op with uh just uh was it apothecary uh, was it apothecary apothecary yeah. yeah yeah it's, it's something potions, you don't really expect cooking food yeah you can cure yeah, eyesight you know, by... skin, yeah skincare <laughs> yeah you can do just like skincare and just you cure your eyesight oh, well, that's right there's there's an isekai where a guy like He's like a doctor. He comes. He says the pharmacy in the isekai world. So, oh god, god really? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. That's getting anime, but we'll see. Yeah, I think my one fear is that I'm very much enjoying these cute moments, but I feel like it's coming to a head where everybody's trying to keep her abilities quiet. Yeah. And eventually, she's gonna get dragged back into like the guy from the beginning who took the other girl because he thought oh, just because she was more cute and you know uh, kind of easy to manipulate, if you will. Now she's going to get dragged back into this bullshit of this like prince or king or whoever he was that summoned these two girls to this world in the first place. Could be some so, darker tones maybe um, later on. As much as I love dark and, you know, mysterious things, I don't think I'm going to get as that from the show. Many times I just want the show to be show. cute. To Taylor's yeah. point, I love all the cute and just, you know, 
the yeah. eye candy, I guess you can say. That too. Well, I, I, I personally don't like the show at all. I think it's just tragically boring. The only thing that keeps Rude. me watching it is the green haired guy. That's it. Rude. Oh, man. That was Bando. Okay. Understandable. Yeah. That is slice of life stuff. It's just fun to watch. <laughs> I know. I'm really bad with slice of life. That's totally a me thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, That's the shout out I had. Uh, um, next gen full dive. Um, um, I think it was another. What do you think? I mean, I still, I still like it. Uh, okay. I was kind of falling asleep though, uh, just because I didn't have much sleep. Like at the time I was watching it, um, you basically just got to. Um, it, I, th- I think comedy still is holding up. And just kind of like the more of like the lore of uh, uh, like the situation, how you can't just buy a new game and start a new game. It's a little bit more difficult and slash expensive than that. Mm-hmm. But that's I, all I, have. I gotta say though, like for something that I assume was just going to be like straight up comedy, this show can go from very humorous to very dark like that. So yeah, I find that to be really refreshing. Uh, just the fact that by setting the tone of the fact that. It's just some guy who wants to be a hero and play video games. But in this world, he killed his best friend. And now his best friend's <laughs> sister is constantly chasing the guy to, to for revenge. That, that is some yep. scary shit. It's yeah. funny, but it's scary as hell. So well, he, yeah, he's it, wanted by the entire town, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then when the guy just like, you know, completely throws him under Stop the bus in the, in the a, bar. Yeah, mm-hmm. what a douche. That was, that was good as well. Um God. Yeah. So I like the wide like the wide spectrum of emotions that you kind of go through with this episode with yeah. the show. So it looks like yeah. we're going to get some, some good cast members as well. So, so I guess it, it's living up to its title that this next gen full dive RPG is shittier than reality. <laughs> it is indeed. It's pretty <laughs> shitty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not good. Uh, so there's another show, show where I gave it one episode and I'm going to just drop it. The <laughs> rom-com where the childhood friend won't lose. I mean, what happened, we, man? Dude, when I thought you, this was the one. Okay, when you introduce a title like that, you think, okay, this is going to be nice. But then when you then... Uh, ha- but then when all the characters are all childhood friends, I'm like, what the fuck's the point? Like, it, you, it's, you might as well just have a normal fucking rom-com. And I basically just... I, I was like, all right. I'm, I was so I, I, I read the web novel, on. so I'll probably just watch the show because it'll probably go further than what the English subs are. So I'll probably just watch it on my own later. Good luck to you, well, sir. Godspeed. I'm sorry to hear that, you know, your hopes did not come to fruition this time, Sren, but well, for, for every hope that is dashed, there is a new hope in the future. Which this, which this season, win. which this, well, yeah, well, I was going to say, which this season for just like a rom-com is Hika Hero for me. Uh, that was kind of, just kind of came out of nowhere, so I'm just dro- I'm dropping that for that. Is it really a rom-com? Uh, I don't know about that. Well, not yet. Okay. <laughs> it might be. Uh, I okay. feel like there's there's heavy tones set for, uh, hopefully, the Iroha girl. But we'll see. Uh, Fruits Basket. Taylor, if you want to... Anything? Fruits Basket. Um, not like a lot of plot pro- progressed this week. Um, other than like... We learned a little bit more about... Hang on, I've got everybody's name. I'm terrible with names. Got everybody's names here. But So we learned a little bit more about uh, Shigure and how he feels towards Kureno, um, basically the two Zodiac members, and how they feel towards the Zodiac leader, Akito. I am bamboozled by it because apparently Shigure is in love with Akito. I know this manga has been out forever. Everybody knows the plot except me, it feels like. But, like, I just can't wrap my mind around it. Like, why? I don't understand. And, I mean, I never really, like, like, I never really could get fully invested in, in this character, Shigure, because, like, he... He he always seemed a little bit shady. Like, he had some other thoughts going on. And now I find out he's in love with this Zodiac leader who... Is not a nice person at all and is super toxic. And I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but um, we, we basically learn more about that. That's that's really, I think, all that happened this episode. Uh, is it. this like so. is this like the, the final final season? Is it like all done after this? Mm-hmm. Or is there like I don't know more? if they're splitting it. Like they haven't announced how many episodes it's going to be. So I don't know if this is going to be like okay. a part one of two or not. Mm-hmm. But this is the final season. So the actual it's... final season. That's because I thought mm-hmm, last mm-hmm. season was the final season. <laughs> no, no, this is the final season. So for me okay. to understand better, so I get like the relation with like these zodiac care. Are, are all the zodiac characters male characters? And you just no. have like the, the okay. So there's a mix of male and female. Male and female. It's just okay. most of the main. Well, actually, yeah. Like the the very main characters are male, but um, and do all you, the main male characters have some type of like romantic interest in the main girl, or is the girl nope. only focused on like certain zodiac members? 
I know nothing it's about the show, so I was <laughs> okay. trying to think like, is it one girl and like twelve dudes, and then she's mm-hmm. like, you know, having interaction with these twelve zodiac dudes, or no, 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 no. Uh... That's actually why I. That's actually why when all of my friends were reading and watching Fruits Basket back when I was mm-hmm. in high school, I thought it was like that. I thought it was like a harem, and I was like, I don't really care. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. It's a harem romance. It's so far from my level of interest. I, I just, I don't know. That is not what it is. There is one. Okay. One of them is interested in her, and there was another one that you think might be interested. Like there might have been a love triangle, but that has, uh, at the, from the beginning of the season, actually, or, no, sorry, end of last season, they actually threw that out the window and confirmed okay. that he does not feel that way Just towards her. <laughs> yep. So okay, well, which I think is there's a lot more depth but... and variety to it because I very much so had I, I knew you know the the respect and the admiration that a huge fan group has for this series. Mm-hmm. But I just never had any, you know, direct experience with it. So yeah, I, I never rose tinted goggles of, oh, mm-hmm. isn't it just one girl and like twelve <laughs> hot looking guys that you know Dude, you can just fawn over? There's so much these... more to this show than you could possibly even begin to imagine going into it. Like there's so hmm. many more characters and all like all different, like all different emotions, all different types of like family relationships, friendships, romantic relationships are examined. Like there's just so much happening in this show. It basically covers everything. It's funny and dramatic and yeah. Well, at some point with how much it's been hyped up, I'll I'll probably check it out. So. <laughs> I'm kind of okay. curious about it too. So it's like one of those classics oh. I feel like I should know. Right. I can't it's recommend always, it more highly. It's always in, in list of all kinds. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've had a Let's few shout outs of that in our chat too. With uh Ulysses and I think mm-hmm. Desmond. Yeah. Yep. In our d- Discord. Yep. Yeah. But uh I don't know if uh, I know like the last couple things we have for on shout outs is I don't know if, if there's anything you guys wanted to say for about Mars Red. Um Still haven't watched this it, episode so. of, Yeah. Uh, My uh, bad. I'll say something. So this episode, uh I would say not as gripping as the first, honestly. I think it's, uh, again, going to be a show that really stands on the artistic value at the end of the day. But from a plot perspective, um, I think it's going to be pretty mid, pretty mm. average. Um, so that's that's a little bit of a letdown. But uh, I think for me, I'll continue to watch it just because of that artistic and, and soundtrack focus. But I don't think it's going to be anything that i can strongly say at the end of the day like oh you need to watch this show like it's gonna be you know worth the time all right so yeah and then uh, i don't know if we wanted to just close out uh Koo, if you wanted to mention uh way of the house husband oh uh yeah so you know i wasn't gonna watch uh the series because of the uh I guess the, the back lack of animation, the animation. <laughs> right? The lack of animation, right? Uh, but you know, it wasn't, done, it wasn't done so bad. Uh, uh, it was. I mean, it's in color. You have voice actors, and there is there is slight <laughs> oh, wow. animation. Wow. The bare high, minimum of high, animation, high bars the bare there, minimum. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but then the 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 like the, the point of the story, and then just the the universe being fleshed out. I felt like it was more than enough to kind of get the point across, right? And yeah, you, obviously you're not gonna take this seriously, but for like a, I feel like it's just slapstick humor, to be honest. And you know, it's also slice of life, so there's not like much crazy action going on. It's a very short. It's there's very short episodes. I think each episode's like maybe 10, 13 15, minutes long. Yeah, between there. Yeah. yeah. So it's not even that, it's not even like that long. So it's just a nice like comedic show to watch to just kick back to. And then if you like you like slapstick humor, or uh, I guess if you have a lame sense of humor like I do, you might find it enjoyable. But I think it 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 does the job enough to where it's enjoyable. So I, just, I, I would just, say if you got nothing else to do, I would definitely give it a shot. I just feel like I should just read the manga instead. We're not gonna bother animating it. Yeah. Well, well, the problem for me is if you watch something, when you add like some animation and you add voice actors, it really does add like a whole new like uh, complexity to it rather than okay. just reading totally. the manga. Right. So I, I, I enjoy that. That's one reason why I would much rather watch anime than read manga because instead of you creating your own voices and trying to like figure out the personalities, how they should sound, right? Like it's, it's done for you. So you don't have to work as hard. Perfect example of that, okay. the originator of uh, One for All 
and you know the the shocking oh, voice God. that we saw was given to him i don't know for, that's for a this good reason. like a good reason to watch that is anime as reading manga. those points as a mongarita first that was the farthest voice that i expected <laughs> him to have so directly to your point Ku, like sometimes it adds a good layer of you know maybe you, know, you hit the ball out of the park where if you read the manga first then when you hear it animated you're like oh yeah that's totally how i expected yeah. this character to sound mm -hmm. versus right. it might be better to watch the anime first because then you, all you know is what they've typecast it as this individual and then if you do mm -hmm. go to the manga it's like you at least now have some idea of what this person sounds like rather than leaving it to your own imagination that can be a very double-edged uh sword yeah sometimes. it could make or break the character and <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly um <laughs> I did watch oh, the first ahead, episode, so maybe I'll have to, I'll have to try. There, I mean, it's not like it's that much time that I'm using. That, yeah. uh, I, I mean, I, I definitely can kind of agree with David's sentiment of if they really didn't reinvent the wheel in the anime, you know, why wouldn't I just read the manga? Yeah. I guess the thing that's weird to I me guess... is like if the manga readers enjoyed the so show so much and, you know, they were hyped that it got greenlit for an anime and it kept faithful to the material, like, how is there really a disconnect there? Because if That's the manga true, true. is very like, you know, similar animation style, like quick cuts, quick kind of like, you know, joke interjection type things. And uh -huh. literally that's what the producers sought out to do when they took, you know, the show to be animated. It's like, how can you be mad at that? Like they, they recreated I, the work that you love I think know, as just, a manga reader. I think, well, I think it's the expectation that like, or do they expect it to add so much more animation and well, all these so other things more, that's like, well, it's not, it's not the same show then, or it's not the same it's, series. It's not so much more, but I think just like just having a regular animation, like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if you think about Promise Neverland I, season two, I mean, <laughs> maybe you should stick to the original source. Oh, that's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I didn't read the manga, so like, so I, I can't really, I don't know, like, yeah, maybe I, I'm just I didn't read the manga and I, I didn't watch a show, yeah. so I can't really say much. So maybe after I can give a better argument right now, it's just like, like if I, if, if something I read, like it's get to anime now, it's like, I, I don't expect them to like, to, to fall like, a, like, like a manga, like the like stack image. Like my, I want to be like normally animated. What's right. crazy. Yeah, but, true, yeah. What's crazy is like, uh, like, and I go to online, there's a bunch of people who are hating it, but then mm -hmm. all the people who I know personally have loved the show. So I don't know what the hell is it like, like what's the disconnect with both groups. Well, I mean, that's, that's, I feel like, that's, that's I feel like if you like really like it, I, I feel like if you really like it, you were just expecting too much, and you were let down by the lack of effort, I guess, uh, they put into it, right, to make it an anime, right? Uh, but again, if you if you really think about it, it's it's still a really nice show, and yeah. it's like an upgraded visual novel in a sense, right? <laughs> like I said, you got, you well, got the voice actors, people, you got. I don't think that's what people want but, from I mean, an anime, though. They don't want an upgraded visual novel. They want like well, an actual anime. Yeah, I mean, I guess the thing that's really tough to think about is like it would be the best scenario to get somebody who knew nothing about the show mm -hmm. and have them watch this well, Netflix what... and just and just be raw. Like, what did you think about it? That's yeah. what I think it is. I think because uh, everybody, the people I know personally, uh, Ku, you haven't read the manga, right? No. Okay. Yeah. So, that, <laughs> no. so I think the but people Ku, who have but Ku at least it? knew about the backlash. Yeah. Right. Well, I think yeah, but... watching it. So that's the thing. It's like you have to get somebody that is like a complete quote unquote normie that just goes on Netflix and they're like, Oh, okay. Let me peep this and then see what their thoughts are. Well, mm. what, what I was going to, uh, what I was going to say is I, I feel that the people who have not read the original source, I, I think have enjoyed it more than the people who have read the original source. Cause I don't know if they, they felt like well, they were expecting more. I'll say Stratton that, um, like that's a problem you get with, like trying to read too much into online comments because they're, uh, it's such like a, it's, like echo chamber and like vocal minority that mean mm. so, so like so it's hard <laughs> so it's like that's why you have to you have to really you can't just like just take online the online yeah. like, as as a representative of the general audience right so well, but what's the weird thing is like most of the time when you go to like reddit threads like that you know usually for that anime also, they're positive well, for the show also especially <laughs> right. especially reddit uh they're very biased against like the animation itself right like like I've animation noticed that actually techniques recently, yeah. and like and animation like so, just like animation itself rather than story or anything else like mm. it's very focused on like the art than like mm. anything else same gotcha. thing with manga like people are very like so many people like say like like say like they drop manga just because like the art they don't like the art or the art they think the art's not up to their standards instead of like just liking for the story that's I interesting. Think... And maybe because I'm like less experienced in the mangas that I've read versus the animes that I've watched. But I feel like the exact opposite. Like I feel like I am much more critical about animation quality, but with like mangas, 
I read. I'll read like any. Oh, I'm just saying, style like, like format at this point. In general, really like, bar. I'm just saying, in general, like, people online are much more. They care much about the art than anything about mm, anything okay. else. That's yeah. what I was. Like, that's I'm what I was gonna say. Like, if I was, if I had like the same mindset when it came to manga, like, I mean, I, I just saw AOT and like a uh, manga for the first time. And I thought, and if I would have saw that, I would have dropped it. Like it looks so. Oh, like, the the early <laughs> it looks so bad. A, okay, <laughs> yeah. Isayama Rude. definitely evolved yeah. as an artist over the course of these, you know, eight ten years. It yeah. Evolved to so, a mediocre artist by yeah. the end. Yeah, I'm, just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, no, I think that's that's totally fair, and I think that's something again. You know, when you have this uh, dichotomy of anime versus manga, in which you pick up first. Mm. That totally, you know, creates these biases in your mind and it makes it really hard to go, you know, back and forth because a perfect example, Promise Neverland obviously didn't do what it needed to do for season two of the anime. And I'm sure for those of you that decide to go and read the manga, you are going to have kind of this feeling of like it's, it, it, it's, it's not as impactful because it, it's I think it's different. You can though. Only get, uh, yeah, because like the anime still didn't live up to expectations either. So I don't think that's a really good example to use well hmm, i guess what, what would be a good example like i think it's tough for attack on titan like if you were to go and read the manga right now like after where chapter four ends and you see a lot of what's to come you're probably going to feel a little let down in terms of like the action sequences versus like the anime you know what i mean because to see something animated to Ku's point earlier with voice acting with you know, things in motion with the added sound effects and, and usage of, you know, uh, soundtracks and music that can only amplify shows so much more. So that's something that I've come to appreciate as I've read more and more manga because I didn't read as much manga originally. Um, but it is something that I'm noticing more and more when I see, you know, people talking about manga versus anime and they're mm -hmm. like personal gripes. And I, I feel like it's more common for somebody that goes from an anime to a manga to be like, oh man, like this is, this is so much harder to, you know, get into than if you go from a manga to an anime, but maybe I'm just biased there. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? Uh, that was good. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm opposite. Like, I'm very much like manga to anime too. So like, I don't have, like, I don't have the perspective of someone going from anime to manga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if anything, as long as you you add more to it and make it more uh, rewarding to watch or read or whatever, mm -hmm. I think that's fine, right? It's not like you're taking a step back. If you're just adding more to the world, I I don't see why uh, a true fan of the work would be so angry about. Well, you know? yeah, one of the things that sucks is like well, one, you're not going to please everybody, but at the same time, it's right. a, if it's the people who are hating, let's say they read their they they read um the house husband. And then they basically hated the anime. And then the whole, then you could go back and say like, you know, well, does it hold up to the original, the original uh, source? And then if they say yes, then it's like, well, what the hell's your problem? Is that all right? <laughs> like, I was like, it's like, still bro, getting it. Just, stop, stop, I mean, stop. at the end of the day, both I, both are going to have their pros and cons. And I think yeah. the series that really stand out are the ones that clearly are as closely as possible with the two mediums uh, match as mm -hmm. closely as possible. Where I think kind of like as Ku was mentioning, you know, again, potentially using Attack on Titan as an example. One of the things that you can't get from the anime is a lot more of the detail and lore dumps that they go into. Which is only going to be found in the manga. Because again, from an anime, you only have 24 minutes each week. You really got to pick and choose what you're going to choose to animate, what you're going to try to blend together or gloss over. So that is one thing in my mind, the manga will always shine in because they are allowed to have that. Kind of I have deeper much dive. more things to say sure. about this, but I, 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 yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry, 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 to completely derail. Yeah, topic. we can. Like, yes, perfect. This is supposed to be a short <laughs> shout out, and yeah, uh, it on, my so. bad. <laughs> no, 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 not. Trent, don't you apologize. I, I took this one, so, <laughs> so I apologize. So yeah, so. that was good though. I, I, I was actually very interested in this. I always yeah. yeah. like, like, find these, these but, end of yeah, podcast topics. I would like, I like to say more. Just cutting me off. That's not like a three-hour show. So yes, like. This will be a this will be a uh, so, uh, was it a topic near, like you no know, near you uh, so, soon. Sounds good. So, <laughs> On its own time. We're in it right here before someone else drags us down. Before so, we go to four. I have, I have one more thing now. Okay. So <laughs> just I'm just right here. Just like well, I'm gonna say yeah, all this yeah. stuff, That's but fair. we barely Look, just mute me. I know you have the power, David. So, mute me off. <laughs> we're in here. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Cue the outro Later. music. <laughs>